Good evening and welcome to the Dark Mom Consortium for May the 24th, 2022. I'm Mom. How's everybody doing? I'm back from a long weekend back in Chicago and then a very short Monday evening in scenic Bloomington, Illinois, where I had a lovely class in beating the crap out of other people. Actually, that's not true. We spent the entire class time playing sticky hands, which if you've never played sticky hands, put your wrist against your opponent's wrist, close your eyes, move, and try to figure out what's going on. How do you get that person into a lock? Nicely. Without them figuring out, you're going to put them in a lock before they put you in a lock. So that's how I spent my evening, only to get home, driving home, coming up 74, turn on to 65, get a call from my boss that there's a problem at work. So what the heck? Why not go to work at 11 at night? So I'm a, I'm a little tired this morning, this afternoon, this time of day. And hi, Hate. Hi, Galaxy Star Queen. How's everybody doing tonight? Thank you very much. It's good to be back. Not sure if we'll do a show tomorrow or if I'll just try and catch up on my sleep tomorrow and get some work done. Uh, definitely be doing a show on uh, Thursday, though. Hang on a second here. Hi, Id. Let me go turn this on. I promise I'll go turn this on right now. Okay, I'm in uh, Discord if anybody wants to jump in and join. Waving back to Yuri. Hi, Yuri. Hello, Alpha. How are you? Good evening, Mom. I'm doing well. How Good. Are you? I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Like I said, back back in front of the camera, I did a little bit of uh, streaming from Chicago, but didn't take my stand, didn't take my lights, and I realized trying to hold the camera here and play here wasn't going to work. So, didn't do that. Who is that from? Oh, of course I'll accept that one. There we go. All Hi. accepted. Hi, GSQ. How are you? Good. Good. Glad to hear that. How was your... Let's see. What is this? This is Tuesday. How was your weekend? Really good. Celebrated my birthday with family. Yay, birthdays. Birthday. Yeah. Now, here's the scary part, Alpha. Tell them how old you are. Make us all feel old here. I'm 21. Yeah, I know. I can remember being 21 long ago. Long ago. Too long ago. Long ago. Well, you're still young. I'm just, I'm feeling my age this weekend. You know, it's one of those six hours in the car, an hour class, and an hour at work after working eight hours. And it's catching up with me, and I'm feeling very old today. I'm, I'm hoping my my job or my industry in general doesn't end up turning me prematurely gray. <laughs> That's why they make hair dye. Mm, this is true. Um, it has sent me a message saying, Mom, if I remember correctly, Duffy had gone away from Stowe at the end due to the Ukrainian invasion and all, correct? Saying he was tired of war and death. Um, that may be true, but he actually did do a stream just a few days before he passed. So, I think he was tired of war and death because there had been a lot going on in his life. And the thing I love about Star Trek Online is... While we deal a lot with war and death in the game, we also have us. We have the people here who I think are the opposite. Mm -hmm. Life and death and life again. Yeah. yeah. It's actually one thing I love about fiction writing Star Trek Online is how many times has Martok died? Keeps coming back. Picard's been killed. He comes back. Q comes back. In the especially Trek in general these days, no one has ever truly gone. Damn, this is true. There was another mass shooting in Texas. Oh, okay, mass shooting. Uh, 
two dead and injured a dozen others. So yes, I guess that does count as a mass shooting. I didn't read the whole thing. I heard about that. Yeah, I did not. I'm not anti-gun. I'm just anti-people who use them stupidly. So um, it is talking about what we're going to do with the money we're going to raise from, I hope that we're going to raise from the Duffy thing. What's in the process of happening right now is we are building a website called Two Absent Friends, which will be a um, fundraiser that we will run kind of once a year. Hopefully we'll get enough stuff together. And it's going to be set up so that we can pick a charity and the funds that you guys will be bidding on stuff that we've got. You'll send the money either to a website that will send it out or directly to the charity and I will send you whatever you bought, in essence bought, and we will fund it that way. But the first thing we'll be figuring out how or what we're going to do for the charity. So it will be starting out with, uh, we have 80 convention codes, so we will have 80 you know, possibilities. Everybody who sends in a good idea for a charity will get one of the convention codes. So that means if you can't come up with any money for something, at least you can contribute some brain power and feel like you've done something for it. Um, but what that charity will be is, you know, we haven't decided yet. I think we're going to have to vote on it and make sure like this, well, this might be a great cause, and maybe what we decide to do, it would be more of a group consensus. Yeah, we got over 100 hate, all told. Probably got about 120. I have 80 of them. Frost, I think, has 14 left, and we've given out maybe 50. Cryptic came to us with this many code cards. And we've been trying to share them with everybody. We've donated a couple uh, to some fundraisers. And we will continue to do that. And everything that we have to give away so far for the convention, or for the uh, fundraiser, is actually from Cryptic. And that tells you what they thought of Duffy. Well, okay, I'm going to lie. That's not entirely... Right? No, it is entirely true. Now they think about it. Everything they did give us, now wasn't just for this year, but they've given us other stuff in the past. So we've got... Badges, stinking badges, a couple different ones. We've got that one. We've got the Reliant. There we go. We've got the Penny Pins from a couple of years ago. Uh, we've got the convention codes that we will give out. We have 10 Eagle Moss ships, five of which, five or six of which were signed by Thomas. Some ships of the line calendars, one of which was signed by Thomas. Um, and some Star Trek Attack Wing game kits. Which ships did they give away at the convention? Well, they gave them all to us. <laughs> um, there's, yeah, hang on a sec, I'll go grab them. All right, so we have here a um, da, 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 the Europa. Hopefully, I don't show the same ones twice. We have the Vastum, nice little Romulan ship. We have here the Mo. Give yourself a nice Klingon ship. This one's actually really good looking. We have the Baran. For those of you who like your discovery. Um, we have a Gem Hadar of Vanguard Carrier. And we have the Border Skew. So we've got that nice little stack of them. GSQ, I uh, saw what and loved it. Yes, and, and we have uh, games, or we have prizes in game, which I haven't talked about yet. People have given us a, I think the correct technical term is a crap ton of stuff to that they've donated for us to give away. 
or raffle off. Did everybody get really quiet all of a sudden? Hello? Hello. Oh, there you are. Hi. Got very quiet. So GSQ says, I did a drawing for Bruce Horak, who's playing Hammer, and he saw it and loved it, but I don't know what he saw. The game? The show? No, I did a uh, Ooh. art drawing. I did an art drawing piece, and I ended up posting it to Twitter, and he saw it and, and loved oh, it. Oh, nice, nice. We just got raided by Lucius de Morte. Or, excuse me. Lucius, Luscious de Morte. Lucius, Luscious. Lusciously Lucius. Good evening. I'll show you guys in the dish cool over That would be cool. I'd love to see it. So I will get everything hopefully this weekend up and running. My husband is doing very, very well. So I can go and do annoying things at the house. But Lucius, Lucius. So I did say it right the first time. But it still looks like it's luscious. There are worse things than being luscious, Lucius. Oh, okay. So when I saw that GSQ, I did a drawing. I'm thinking like you did a drawing like in a raffle type drawing, not you did a drawing. Sorry. No, no, that's my bad. That was totally my bad. <laughs> Didn't specify. Actually, yeah, hand painted too. Nice. Speaking of which, oh, I don't have it with me. I have a beautiful painting from... Uh, God, my brain's just not working today. From Dante of Molrihan, which is at the framers, getting framed because I forgot to pick it up. Oops. And it's in the most Romulan frame I could find, which, you know, you go in and you take a piece of artwork in there and they're like, oh, that's interesting. And I'm like, yes, it's new Romulus. I need to make sure that, you know, the frame is appropriately Romulan. And the guy's like, mm, so, okay, like, like what, metal? And I'm like, no. So I went back the next day and I said, okay, here's my picture of Molrihan. And I need it to be particularly Romulan. He's like, yeah, we need to do maybe some beaten brass. And I'd like to pull in the red tones, you know, from the... Um, Wow, everybody's here tonight. It's Jazzy Cat. Oh, hi, Jazzy Cat. Boy, Lucius and Jazzy Cat. Hi, everybody. You're all here tonight. Thank you. Thanks for stopping in. Hello. Ooh. Kiri, um, Kiri, Amaya, 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 Amaya. Kiri, I'm going to mispronounce your name, so please let me know how to say it correctly. Lucius just reminded me how to say it. Anyway, it was very nice to go back to the framing shop, and the guy actually understood what I meant when I said it has to be Romulan. Of course, this is the same place that I went in with with my Klingon poster. And I said, you know, it's got to be a Klingon frame. And he's like, oh, yeah, I've, I've got just the thing. And it was like beaten wood that had been polished and faded and looked distressed. I'm like, oh, good taste. So the poster that I have is a Klingon poster. Wow. More cool stiff stuff from id for the prize party. Assimilated, assimilated plasma beans, beams. Um, so I have this $16 Klingon poster. It's Worf and Martok and somebody else. And there's a bird of prey coming in overhead. Really cheap poster. And it was triple matted preservation glass dry mounted in this beautiful beaten wood frame. So the framing process was about $400 for a $16 poster. <laughs> But the thing is, you walk into my house, and there's this wall of almost black gray paint. And it's the one thing that's there. So you walk in, and you know this is a Klingon house. Oh, what did you do, Jazzy Cat? What did you do to have an injury? Oh, my goodness, you keep adding to that. Holy crud, Yuri. Th thank you. You're giving us way too much nice stuff, dear. All kinds of cool stuff. Let me go stash it in the prize bank. Hopefully there's some room in the prize bank. Um, oh, no, we don't want to put it there. That's accessible. Mm, okay. Fine, I'm going to have to go find a prize bank to put that in. Well, rest your injury. Be well. Let's see. A weak shoulder joint so prone to... Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, you go take care of yourself, you know, go do whatever you need to do. Ouch. Owie, owie. I promise Yuri I will not touch any of these things that are sitting here. I have a prize bank that we use for prizes that only um, Pi and I have access to. And technically Farnsworth, but he doesn't play anymore. Um, I'm going to, I have two tunes that are set aside just for stuff for this. But I just want to make sure everything's set up so that we never see the money. It doesn't look like we're taking money for anything because that's a big no-no. And it all goes to the third party and we never touch it and Kells was of the opinion of just use it for something good for all the stuff they gave us so that's what we're doing but enough talking about how awesome the fleet is and what the good things that we can do are because we will do something good let's go kill th something I posted it in the lounge I'm looking right oh that's adorable that's I've been told by many that is adorable. You need to make a little plushie like that. That would be such a cute plushie. Hi, Dante. I sent you a message in game. Yeah. Are, you playing hide Are you playing hide and seek, Alpha? No, I'm getting my hotkeys confused between games. Yeah, I saw you duck down there. I'm like, he's playing hide and seek. Yeah, see his character sheet in a, in a different in Old Republic, so that's what I was going to. Yeah, I do that all the time. <laughs> well, I'll be up in space and spamming everything off the space bar, and then I get down to ground combat, and it's all oh shoot, no, it's not space bar, is it? As my tunes look well, totally spastic. Mm -hmm. ah! I use shift all the time. I try to use shift all the time because that's how you run in Star Trek online. And I use, try to use shift in Star Wars, the Old Republic. And I'm like, can't do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Ed is constantly on me to make sure that everything is keyed exactly the same, that all of the uh, macros that I use are the same ones because I use a different one on my other account than I use on this one. So on this one, it's 0, 1, 4, and 7. On the other one, it's up, down, left, right. BA, BA, select, start. <laughs> so it, it gets interesting. Mother-in-law's grass is freshly mown. Soon I will be home to kill some damn dirty gorn. Yes. Dante's on his way home. Hi, Musin. How are you? Oh, that's so cute. So I was thinking we could do a little Operation Repost tonight if anybody needs to do it. Yes, yeah, please. I'm logging yes, on again. Please. Yeah, yeah. So as I put in Twitter, it's a cup and a half of all-purpose flour, two eggs, a pinch of salt, dash of olive oil. I like olive oil, some oil. Mix it together till it's starting to kind of stick together, and then you just put in a little bit of cold water till it comes together. Knead it, let it rest for a while, roll it out, slice it up, and that's Operation Repasta. Then just grate a little Romulan cheese on top. And we're good. I hear gluten-free Operation Repasta is best served cold. <laughs> okay, I'm remembering that for the next time we have Operation Repasta. <laughs> that, that one's good. Get that cheese to sick bay. <laughs> <laughs> it's well cultured. <laughs> So Mucin asks, did you see the Chippendale Rescue Rangers movie? If, we're talking the old one, like 20 years ago? Oh, uh, Disney Plus just released a new one. Oh, no, I haven't seen that. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I've seen, the, I've seen the old one. I don't have Disney Plus at the moment. Um, I have Paramount for another seven weeks. By the way, is everybody caught up to speed on uh, Strange New Worlds? Can we talk about it yet? Last week, yes. Yeah, okay. Anybody not caught up to speed on Strange New Worlds? <laughs> okay, so now we can talk about Strange New Worlds for about 24 hours because at this time, well, not this time tomorrow, but 
18 hours from, or sorry, 24 plus about 8, about 32 hours from now, it'll be the new episode and we won't be able to talk about it. But yeah, so far, dag nab it, that show's getting good. Three episodes in and it's like, wow, okay. If they can keep this up, I'm, I'm going to be real happy. Yeah, the, the most recent episode, I think, has been the strongest one yet. I, can't I agree, yeah. Yeah, this last one was excellent. Um, somebody, um, one of the news channels, was rating the Star Trek series uh, from worst to best, and obviously we're all going to disagree with every single thing that person wrote, but they did put Strange New Worlds up in the top three. Well, Lucius, you would never acquire it from dubious sources. We would never do that. <laughs> Okay, so let's all agree on what's the number one Star Trek series. Ooh. Is it possible to get consensus? On no, of course not. Mark Der Chief is now following. Thank you very much, Mark Der Chief. The one I am currently watching at the time. Not always, but frequently, yes, because generally the ones I'm not watching I don't care for. Um, they said Enterprise was the worst, and I don't think Enterprise is the worst one. Uh, I tend to disagree with that, too. Yeah, I mean, it, it didn't have the finest moments all the way through, but it wasn't... I mean, there's no Star Trek that's consistently horrible. There's a couple that are not good, but not consistently not good. I mean, they all have something. So, uh, Mar Hawkman put down uh, Star Trek, the animated series, as the best, mm -hmm. and Lower Decks the second best. I'm not going to argue with Lower Decks being in the top three, in my opinion. But you guys tell me, what was the best Star Trek? And we're not talking movies, we're just talking series. Mark Duchief says the one I'm most fond of is DS9. I want to say on a technical storyline, characterizations, acting, consistency, and arcs, I think DS9 is probably the best in terms of quality of show. Best Star Trek was Wrath, uh, no, yeah, I'm using Wrath of Khan, nope, 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 it, it is, yes. Though it has been said, you know, what's the best Star Trek movie? Is it the one with the whales? Is it the one where they go back to San Francisco? Or is it Star Trek Four? <laughs> yeah, next best is whales. Um... I prefer, if I'm going to say, TNG is probably my favorite Star Trek series. But it's not the best, but it's my favorite. You know, I can differentiate between the two. DS9, I think, was the best done of all the series, but not my favorite. Um, possibly Lower Decks is going to be the two of them together. I really enjoy what they've done with it. And I think they've got a good idea of how to understand it. Is it the one where the timeline changes are impossible to repair? That would be the Daniels universe. But Prodigy it, is really good. And I can't stand it. I really dislike it. But I think because, to some extent, the same reason I didn't like Lower Decks, I didn't get it because I didn't think it was aimed for my age, and then DT clued me into do it in closed caption so that it's e easier to read and get the dialogue. But with Prodigy, it's I think it would be more enjoyable if I was 13 again. But I find it's... It, it plays down to kids, which you don't need to do. And the animated series is a great example if you don't need to play down to kids. They're not stupid. They are not. It Musen says Prodigy is so aimed at youths. It is. But sometimes that can be a little pandering to them. And mm. kid, kids are reasonably smart, and if you treat them like they're reasonably smart, they tend to react like they're reasonably smart. Which confuses me on Cryptic saying that Nickelodeon has issues with the age rating of STO, hence why we don't have the, uh, the Protostar yet. And I'm like... 
have they watched SpongeBob? <laughs> yeah, really. Power Rangers or Invader Zim? Or Invader Zim or a dozen other shows they have on their network? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, some of the stuff that's on there is just amazingly not good content for kids. Or heck, even even uh, Prodigy. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, 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 it might, you know, talk, you know, not talk down, but, you know, lower itself to, to, to the, the kid range, but they're not pulling any punches. I will say I haven't watched it enough to make any serious opinions. The f first episode was just so bleh that it just put me off. And uh, that's actually the reason I have watched Strange New Worlds for more than one episode. It's because, okay, it wasn't great, but you could see the potential there. They did some, they did a lot of effort to make it uh, have some characterization, some flavor, some background story that they weren't just going to scream out and say, here's the whole background story, go. Uh, so it's, and that's why I like this last episode. It hinted at things. It gave you little tastes of stuff, but you're going to have to go watch some more of it to get more of it. Um, on this rating of the Star Trek series in terms of least popular, they put Picard fairly low on the list. Um, as I said, it doesn't. It didn't feel like Star Trek. It felt like a character study for one character, which is probably a good synopsis of it. I would, I would agree with that. Yeah, I mean, I I like the character study, but it's not the flavor of Star Trek we're used to. And I'm curious what they're going to do in season three, since it's going to be all of the crew back together. Has everybody seen Picard at least? Yes. So we we all know what happens in episode ten, right? We're not going to give away anything. Raise your hand if you haven't seen episode ten. Okay, Musin's seen it. I sent your mail, Mom. Oh, thank you. Ooh, sweet. Uh, Kiri, I agree. Picard needed script writers who understood how to write a script. <laughs> and a director who understood how to direct. And what happened instead was you got self-indulgence going on about trying to pull in all these different storylines and trying to be uh, virtue signaling and all these other things. Mm -hmm. Get the script, get your point, get it really tight, and then you can add in flavors, but instead it's like 10 different hits of the day and trying to make it into a story. Um, I, I While well, I get the Rene Picard thing, it kind of got to be a blow-off at the end. It wasn't really relevant. It wasn't really important. I see where they were going, but they didn't play with it enough. The Picard backstory I thought was blown away as being way too short and way too trite. Um, and unnecessary, and kind of in conflict with canon, even though they did try to explain it away. I, I would have loved to have seen a hundred times more Q. Hi, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Q was so good in that series, I wanted to see it be more about him. From what we understand, he's going to be in season three. <laughs> That's great! How, how the heck do you do that? Um, I'm going to leave it up to them to explain that. Uh, oh. But uh, well, yay! Because he, 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 he was there, and he, uh, John Delancey was posting photos from the uh, season three last day on set. Wow! Well, that's awesome. I mean, I I really loved Q. I thought John Delancey was amazing. He, um, what was it? It was the second episode with the slap. Oh, right. oh my god, that was that was just a moment I'm thinking, oh, if we can keep this going for all ten episodes, this is going to be the best series ever. But they couldn't do it. And it's hard. It's hard to do it for what's basically a ten-hour movie to keep it as tight as it needs to be. They saved up a lot of money for the special effects in the finale, rather than making a show in space. There were special effects in the finale? You, yeah. Nah. That was but, a... like, they did the whole second season 
you know, in a city because right. it's cheaper. Yeah. Though they did in California, which is not cheaper, but yeah, no, I get that. Well, it's cheaper than building a bunch of sets and paying a bunch of people to do CGI. Well, I, I get that too, but it, if that was supposed to be special effects at the end, I wasn't impressed. And the yeah. special effects at, on the ship at the end were just the same effects we had in the first and second episode, so not significant there. Uh, Lesha says, I cried at Picard Season 2. Cried because it was emotionally touching or cried because you didn't like it? I'm not sure which way you're going with that one. I liked it. I loved Q. I was really sad with Q. I loved the surprise. I really loved the surprise because we had just seen Will Wheaton at the convention kind of going, oh, yeah, I'm not going to be in season three with everybody else. And I'm sure every... Uh, the different project, uh, the different uh, series uh, were at, uh, like, competing to try to bring him back. <laughs> It was a wonderful moment, is all I can say. And, you know, there's that whole arc of, maybe we could do an entire series about the Travelers. That would be amazing. I would love to uh, see that. Revive, revive the, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, what was the, uh, the Gary Seven uh, series supposed to be called? Uh, well, it was Assignment Earth was the episode, but I don't know what the series was supposed to be called. Yeah, I mean... Uh, yeah, revi revive that idea. Yeah. That, that would be a fine idea. You could play with that and have some fun, especially there's your opportunity to do your virtue sig signaling and Simon get the theme Earth. of the day. Yeah, Assignment Earth. With, oh God, what was his name? What was the actor's name? I know it was Terry Garr was in that. But um, uh, Robert Lansing? Was it Robert Lansing? Did they explain why Q said he was dying alone when he has a son? Yeah, uh, well, technically, kind of all die alone. It's it's a mental place sometimes, Dante. Well, I know exactly why I I could put Q in season three even after his death. Oh. Yeah, Q exists throughout all time. Okay, yeah. He's okay. non-linear. This is true, but by giving him a death, they kind of just made his... They, he's no longer non-linear. He's line segment. He had a beginning and an end. Well, so, he, has, he has an end, but that doesn't mean he didn't come from, like, way, way in the future. So he ends here, but he's also there? Yeah, So because so he still when, has... Yeah. When he shows up at the... Uh, the, the basement interrogation room he's like we haven't met yet and I'll see you out there okay because yeah. he, uh, he, when he was doesn't to get erased from the timeline hmm. for now having died yeah the whole interrogation in the basement was also a bit that could have been pitched yeah. but and, uh, also if I hear the dialogue correctly it's to him, it's what Picard would know as dying. To him, it's to a few, it's more of something beyond what he's always been. What okay. he doesn't know beyond. All right. Death is the next great adventure, sort of a thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, I can totally go with that, and then the next great adventure. I still get annoyed by the fact that they got the timeline for Picard and. Uh, Hat lady. Guinan, wrong. Because they had met already on Earth. Yeah, not, from the, not, not from the Confederation uh, uh, Confederation Picard's timeline. So it's yeah, not the same Guinan, though? No, they, they backpedaled because of timeline changes that Picard and Guinan had not yet met. But yeah. I, I know exactly what you mean. And that was yeah, a hindsight from, mistake backpedaling correction. Yeah, fr from, the, from the Confederation uh, uh, corrupted timeline, uh, Time Zero never happened. Okay, but yeah, then when they go back to the real timeline, 
how did that Guinan know about that meeting, or was it strictly because Picard told her? Well, technically the Confederation timeline doesn't start until the death of Rene Picard. Right, so Does that should have been the same. No, they, yeah. I remember they had a different reason for timeline changes to have occurred. Yeah. They erased the TNG episode. They did. Like, yeah, I'm sure they did. It's, it's the same way that they had to change um, Picard's mother dying from what it had been in TNG. But, yeah, yeah, yeah no. They, they, nope, they nope, had nope, a throwaway nope. line there of, I even used to imagine seeing her in yes. old age serving me tea. Yeah. yeah, that's their justification line of, of why we have her show up in that one in season, that one scene in season yeah. one, and then we see how she ends in and the that series. That wasn't even her, that was a, uh, that was a, 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 like a, not a spectral form, but a... It, you know, it, a, it was his anthropomorphic, morphizing her, yeah. you know, part of his brain doing that. But th the whole thing is that they had to throw in that line because all of us were going to be like, well, oh, hang on a second here. We know which episode she's in because we are just such nerds and we think about that stuff. And besides, I, I've got my own head canon for his parents and him and how their relationships evolved over time. So no, don't mess with my head canon. I've already got my story written. This is where I would like to add that the writers of the script for Chippendale Rescue Rangers <laughs> respected the canon of the show that it was based on. Which show was it based on? Rescue Rangers. <laughs> well, you're supposed to you're supposed well, to know your canon. For a new movie, right? Yeah, but You'd expect changes they change nothing if you're going to write picard i would suggest that you go back and watch the seven seasons of tng and a couple of the movies take care luscious thank you so much for being here and thanks for your comment i agree the uh the hug with q and picard was really t really really sweet but you know i i, I want to get people excited for that Chippendale movie. All right, everyone. You heard it from Mucin. Go out and watch Chippendale Rescue Rangers, the new one. Or else. Uh, what I'm looking forward to is um, X Men uh, 97. It's, I don't know. It's the old Fox. Uh, Disney Plus is doing just the next season of the, of the old uh, Fox uh, animated series. Nice. Also, a uh, good series for watching currently is Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid. I am really, really enjoying that. Like in the Western Billy the Kid? Or is it a different take? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh. Uh, Western Billy the Kid serialized uh, format and I'm really enjoying that. And what's that on? Netflix? Um, uh, um, that's not a question you should ask me. I've if I was in the U.S., cash. if I was in the U.S., where would I be looking for it? Uh, I don't know what we're sharing it. Hang on. I'll Google that. <laughs> I suppose I could Google it, too. Oh, it's on Epics. Epics. Yep. Okay, yeah, I get epics back in Chicago. Yeah, because I am a pirate. <laughs> An epic romantic adventure series based on the life of the famous American outlaw Billy the Kid from his humble Irish roots to his early days as a cowboy and gunslinger in the American frontier to his pivotal role in the Lincoln County War and beyond. Doom, doom, doom. Yeah, well, so yeah. far so good. I'm really enjoying that. With the Tom new, uh, Blythe as Billy and Daniel Weber as Jesse Evans. The new Quantum Leap got picked up for series. Yes, I heard. I heard. It's amazing. I am looking forward to that. The uh, Archer is going to be leaping now? No. no. It, it sounds like it's maybe his daughter is somehow involved in this. 
I think it's kind of undefined. Yeah. Yeah, so the concept has been picked up, but I don't think they've got the details. I hope they do a great job with it. In my head canon, once Archer made sure that the Federation got established, he leaped out. Oh my god, that would be so funny. That would be so funny. Yeah, no, my, 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 my head canon is that uh, uh, Sam is in Archer's body, and at the end of Quantum Leap, Al the bartender, who's played <laughs> by Bruce McGill, who is also Captain uh, Braxton, was recruiting him. Oh, I love this. I love this. Okay, we, we have work to do here. GSQ needs to do a Lucari TFO. We need to do some Operation Riposta. Yeah, maybe I'll have to start doing... To. Yeah, I might have to do a uh, cooking show here one of these days. All right, so uh, let's start with a little Operation Riposta and go Federation style. So give me an X in one of the chats. I have to do it twice because I've got two accounts. So I'm happy to make this run twice here. I, I, I'm pretty sure you have a copy of this, uh, Neelix's cookbook. No, I don't have Neelix's cookbook. It has, uh, I think, Alfarian hair pasta as one of the recipes. Oh my god. So who remembers way back in the day when there was the Star Trek experience and you could go eat at Quark's Bar downstairs? Yeah, very much so. Moogie's pasta. Did you ever try that? I didn't. It was Jamelli pasta with sun-dried tomatoes, a little bit of fresh spinach, some shredded chicken and this lemon sauce on it. I have been trying to recreate this for, what, two decades now? Mm -hmm. That stuff was like heroin. Well, one thing someone told me about some of those di dishes is that the real trick to them is knowing how to season them properly, and good luck figuring that out part. <laughs> Seasoning is always the challenge. We have room for one more person for Operation Repost, if anybody would like to join us. Uh, yeah, I'm logging in. Okay. Like I said, I'm going to run this twice, so if we miss anyone, Actually, we can go again. The trick to doing a recipe from a restaurant you really like is uh, getting a job in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's a place that makes this little appetizer out in uh, southern Wisconsin. And I've been like, I will volunteer to work here. And he goes, yes, I make the recipe for this thing in the back room and nobody does it except me. Damn. If that, no that, that's yeah, actually what, one thing that I was going to say is that uh, some of the whole, like, the secret sauce uh, trope mm -hmm. is because of the fact that only the head chef knows how to make the... Yeah. Um, Oh, yeah. It's, uh, up here where we have such good barbecue. They'll be like, yeah, it's salt and pepper and other stuff. <laughs> I remember reading a book once where the people doing the investigation of uh, a robbery at a... Um, I forget what the actual like name of the store was, but... We will? It, it we will. We will. It it was some it was some company that was uh, producing a um, some kind of sauce that that you would pour on your food. I don't remember mm. exactly. What it was. Oh, I believe that. But um, a key plot detail, however, was that the specific brand of sauce that someone stole the recipe for. Mm -hmm. The secret ingredient that the people who made the sauce didn't tell the general public was that they put pap paprika spice into their sauce when the competitors didn't. <laughs> and that's what made theirs taste different. And that was the secret that was actually stolen. And wow. they catch the person who stole it because this is the person who stole it read the recipe. Mm -hmm. but doesn't actually know what makes the recipe special oh, God. and they just happen to randomly blurt out that the, that kind of sauce was just uh the tomato sauce with a little pap paprika in it reminds me of the um lafayette's and american uh coney uh chili debacle i don't know that one yeah uh they're they're two uh, Coney-style hot dog places side by side. Ah.
So, <clears throat> I used to work in a coffee house in Amsterdam, mm -hmm. and they were known for like their fresh uh, orange juice. Now, the secret to the fresh orange juice was it wasn't actually super fresh, and we squeezed in one lemon and threw in like uh, about a shot glass of vodka. Uh, Lemon lemonade syrup <laughs> to, to sweeten it. That would do it. Yeah. And then we'd make a pitcher, and then we'd pretend to freshly squeeze it. You know, make noise with the machine in the back, <laughs> like we're squeezing it, and just pour it from the the pitcher. Yeah. I'll finish up here if you guys want to go on to the next one. But the well, lemon okay, gave we got it. Transported. All right. The lemon gave it a, a fresh little zing. And, oh, I bet. Uh, the lemonade syrup that we put in, that just gave it that extra sweetness. Well, as long as you didn't say it was pure natural orange juice. Well, well I suppose that depends on your laws. A, a, a trick with a lot of these, though, is that the, the, the people that make them, uh, well, it's like how uh, so some places uh, have what's called orange flavored drink. Yes. Yeah, no, we we actually sold that as orange juice, and we did not inform the people that uh, lemonade syrup was being put in there. Wow. Nobody knew that. Right. So oh. there was certain sugars in there. That wouldn't be in a natural drink. Well, I mean, if you're not claiming that it's pure uh, lemon juice, I mean, you're still good. Well, like I said, it depends on what your state laws are. And, or, you know, basically it's like whether you're lying about what you put in the product, honestly. Well, I, I mean, I guess if somebody would ask, we have to be honest, but, you know, we weren't putting the recipe out there and weren't informing people that there were, you know, artificial sugars in what's supposed to be a all-natural drink. Well, there's a lot of people know. drink orange juice because they don't want the sugars that come in, like yeah. lemonades and soda cans and stuff, and that's exactly the sugars that were in there to sweeten the deal. <laughs> but. Uh, 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 the, 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 the key here, though, is like percentages. So if it's like natural, like sugar that you would normally find in an actual orange, that's no. the majority of the product. That's okay, I guess. No, we're talking about a can of uh, lemonade syrup that you mix with water. <laughs> it's all artificial flavoring. Oh my god! None of that's fresh or real. Yeah, the, the concentrated stuff, yeah. Yeah. I, I want to say Tropicana got into a lot of trouble back in the day for using uh, orange extracts. It sounds like something you don't want to do. Who's going to go planet side? Uh, I could do planet, I Okay. Guess. The ship but, is, you know. doesn't have the maneuverability of all staff here. This is definitely a maneuverable ship. Yes, it is. I can see you zip zapping around there. There was milk in the meatballs. Oh, that's that's not uncommon, though. Oh. Yeah. I mean, if it, I mean, if it's cow's milk, it's semi-normal. Yeah. Yeah, it's very common here to take oh. your breadcrumbs and soak them in milk. Yeah. As long as it wasn't bull's milk. No, 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 no. That adds a certain uh, something to the taste. Full milk, yeah. Just to fluff it up a bit, but yeah. And no, uh, day old bread, some yep. either some uh, whole milk or uh, um, buttermilk. Yep. Yeah, no, this was whole milk. But let's just say that when I'm making meatballs at home, there's no milk growing in there. Really? Wow. Yeah. 
it's all just meat. Uh, it, it, there there was just... one uh, of those things where someone got into serious trouble for uh, not disclosing that they were using coconut milk instead of, you know, actual dairy. And, and, and people are like, oh, but coconut milk is better. And they're like, yeah, but there are people who are actually allergic to coconuts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I was and again. It's it, it's the whole thing. It's like it's not necessarily wrong to use coconut milk as long as you're honest. About yeah. It. Yeah. It, it, it's like uh, the the orange juice thing. If you had used grapefruit, you could really screw someone's medication. Yeah. No, they, we use lemon, which. I just realized that I, I, I'm using the uh, the uh, a PDS console, and that is, if you get close enough, we'll literally just and vaporize the uh, the missiles. You know, you, you know. Alpha, you what happened? And all I can think of is um, Rodney McKay. This is my Delta recruiting. He's not oh, here. Okay. okay, no problems then. <laughs> so let's get that one. I was having lunch uh, with, or actually dinner with Qantas uh, on Friday for a very interesting performance of Dvorak's New World Symphony. Interesting in the sense of oh, what happened to the French horns? Did they forget how to play? <laughs> it, 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 you know, I love Dvorak. But where the French horns last week for Mahler were unbelievable, it's, it's like they brought in the B team this time. Oh. But the conductor many, was awesome. Uh, but any tuxedos were there. Pardon? How many oh. Canadian tuxedos were there? Canadian tuxedos? Yeah, full denim. <laughs> no, no. Oh, at the concert? Uh, actually, not that many. Uh, uh, honestly, for, for being Canadian, I, I would expect glad. <laughs> okay, that's a good point. But but I was surprised people were dressed in nice clothes. I mean, you know, for the warm weather. But but anyway, I was getting back to the uh, dinner with Qantas because we ordered garlic cheese bread as an appetizer, and then she brought me my entree that I ordered, and she hadn't mentioned that it had cheese on it. And she goes, "Oh my gosh, I didn't ask you. Are you allergic to cheese?" As we're sitting there eating the cheese garlic toast. And, you know, no, no, I'm fine with cheese. Thank you very much. I didn't want to embarrass her. <laughs> but, yeah, I think people forget that some okay. things are just in everything. This is something to remember in the future. They actually did change the anti-ship missiles to count as... Um, uh, Destructible as torpedoes? Yes. Ooh! I am now at 13 of whatever. 16, usually. Usually 16. Really? Oh. Yeah. For, for, for some reason, that you or eight, excuse me, eighteen, eighteen. I do the destructible torpedoes on Scylla and Charybdis, and I'll leave you to these so you can get your eighteen. By the way, let me know if you need me, oh, me to step I in. I am at fourteen now. Yeah, but I think there's only one more round coming up. Yeah, but it's like the round with like extra stuff. Okay. Yeah, I do still in Charybdis because the protomatter torpedoes count. And if you stay far enough away, they will just continue to launch them, as long as you don't kill the ships. It's very easy, especially if you have a carrier, to put your um, your carrier pets on the... Uh, the oh, right, the, escort, the like, escort like mode. The escort yeah. Mm -hmm. mode yeah. Uh, otherwise, my pets go out there and just slaughter everything. They, they, and it's they like, just guys... fly circles around you and shoot anything that gets close. Yep. The best part, though, is that the torpedoes count as uh, Zenkathy ships. Oh, yeah, that's it. Uh, oh, really? Look, 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 so, look, yeah. That 15. That's unfortunate. I actually completely forgot that I had the destructible torpedoes uh, task today. I looked out today. I had, like, plasma space damage and Zenkathy ships and Zenkathy ships. I've had this two days in a row of just things were, you know, kill everything very easily. Ground damage, ground weapons, and one captain. Oh, this is the escort mode, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is this is the part where, where you uh, need to gank the enemy without actually exploding them. It's a little fun.
Oh, good. Get it, get it away before the other guys warp core breach on top of it, too. Yeah, there is that part. Uh, I have decided not to use my Tabaro build on this ever again. <laughs> oh. Because the fact that I realized that the, the beach ball will blow them straight to hell. <laughs> Do not fire the beach ball anywhere in the general direction of a transport. To, uh, hang back, cause I can melt a tube. Oh, I did, uh, I did a, uh, ISA the other day. I needed to get some Borg ships. And one guy's like, let me, let me launch my whatever he was doing first. Start to finish. Under one minute. I think it was in the range of like 40 seconds for the whole thing. And I'm like, well, so much for my getting my Borg ships, but it was impressive. <laughs> I think I was probably the pug in that group. Yeah. Oh, that is an impressive amount of phaser fire coming from your fighter craft. And they get to eat neutronic torpedoes. By the way, speaking of that, that purple splat effect. Speaking of strange new worlds, we are going to do a watch party tomorrow night at two a.m. Not tonight, tonight, but tomorrow, to like like thirty hours from now. So, if anybody else wants to stay up to some ungodly hour and watch with us, we will be here. Is that the first time? <laughs> If we can drag the ship over here now. Yeah, we somehow had a pile of transports. Well, everybody was so busy just slaughtering things that, you know. Mm, yeah. I, 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 I got over there and I'm like, okay, time to track to a transport. Wait, wait a second. Why are there two options? <laughs> yeah. Shame you can't grab onto two of them at the same time. Woo! And, and, and not even if you have multi-target tractor beams installed on your ship. Time to escape? No, you're getting coming back here. Come on. Over here. I feel like I'm grabbing a Klingon by the ear and taking him over. I'm going to wash your mouth out with soap if you don't come over here right this second. Also, one thing you can do uh, with the transports to keep them from getting killed mm -hmm. uh, is to use some um, hazard emitters on them. Oh, that's a good idea. Granted, this one uh, went from 75 to 85% in the time that I uh, uh, tractored it, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's something. Uh, anything and, that ooh, heals that, that, their that, that reminds me, uh, if, if you want to have an endeavor for healing damage in space, this uh, TFO is hacked. Really? One, damage you uh, done uh, to the uh, transports and healed counts. Also, remember how many million hit points the boss ship at the end has? Yes. You can just sit next to it and heal it after it's up. Uh, really? Yeah. You can get yeah. like 5 million healing on that thing if you really want to. Amazing. Once you, uh, once you f defeat it, it actually turns over to allied faction mm -hmm. instead of being destroyed. Yep. You, because uh, uh, canonically, you capture his ship instead of blowing it up. Mm hmm. And that makes it a valid target. Well, we've got eight going on nine, if I can get that back over here in the next moment. But, yeah, if you want to keep the transports alive, anything with hull healing. What so about the, 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 the Lucari uh, photo matter console? Would I was just going to ask right about now. that. Okay, we got nine. Pretty it, good. It, it heals anything that's friendly to you, so... Well, I wonder if the... Uh, the support wing uh, skill works. 
Mm. Mourn from the lockbox because that's just about the best hull heel you could throw. Oh wow, that that, that 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 was a good cutscene. A, a car warps in and, and immediately gets shot by. Gee, <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine how that would happen. All right, t -t time to blow these guys. Phrasing. And that was a lot of explosions. And... Aww. Well, one fun thing with this is to uh, use a gravity well to pull the rest of the fleet onto a car's ship. <laughs> so, so, so that they all just, like, a warp core breach on top of them. Oh, we gotta do that. Yay! It's done! See, 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 see what I, I was saying about healing him, though? Mm-hmm. You don't see the, the, the percentage go up, but if you hover over it, you're like, oh, wait, 6,000 of 6 million. 7,000. Yeah. 8,000. <laughs> I would definitely have to give that a shot next time around. Well, that was fun. Trust me, like Pink and Dreadnought Cruiser got me through that. And you guys. Speaking of GSQ, who is right there, we need to... Uh, do a Lucari TFO, is that what you said? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let me just make sure I got my toys that I want. I do. And let's see what we can do for a Lucari. Uh, Alpha, the answer is yes. The question is, which fleet? My endeavor yesterday was a one-stop uh, shop. Herald, sh uh, destroy Herald ships, do kinetic damage in space, and heal uh, a shield healing. Oh, that's hmm. nice. That can work out beautifully. My, my, my personal favorites are, are when it's uh, kill whatever enemy type on ground and a ground damage type. <laughs> so yesterday, no Sunday, I had um, plasma damage on ground, ten tholians on ground, and sixty tholians on ground. It's like, ah, yes. All right, here we go. Okay, give me one sec there, and we'll take care of that. And then I'm going to come back and team everybody. I have to go over and visit mom. One of these days, I think that we're going to hit the. Uh, Triple Carcasses Universal coming up. So we have a ton of Triple Carcasses in the Fleet Bank. If anybody gets to the point where they need those, let us know. Oh, wow. This is this is hilarious. It is. Uh, on Chuffed, his journal, because of the way that they did that whole, like, rearranging things a while back, mm -hmm. his journal is actually uh, broken. Because, uh, because of the fact, see, because I have Beyond the Nexus as an in progress mission that it won't let me skip. Yes. Because it currently sees me as not having done the prerequisite mission. Oh. Oh, boy. Uh, whatever. I, I can just skip the entire New Frontiers arc. You don't want to do that. Um. Go, uh, go hail what we left behind, hmm. or what's left behind in the Delta Arc. Bye. Th that's like the last episode there? Uh, it's the one right before, uh, Dust to Dust. Okay. Wait, who are you telling to do that? Anyone who wants to hear it. Hear what? Janeway? Give me a second. Oh, yeah, hold on, I think I know this one. Tuvok and Captain Kim are leading the analysis of the artifact you found on Vardwa Prime. I knew you'd want to be there for the great reveal, so I've arranged for you and your crew to be part of the team. Rendezvous with Voyager to get started. Hmm, ha, ahem. 
Wasn't that supposed to be Janeway? Yep. <laughs> Oops. Oops. So I'm not sure how long this has been around, but I noticed when we were finishing up that Operation Repost, if you if uh, if you get blown up while you're tractoring one of the freighters, mm -hmm. uh, you can't go back and retractor it. Yeah, no, that's, no. That's, de that's definitely a thing that's been up for a while. Yeah. I think the, since the original uh, build. Wouldn't surprise me. Ooh, I don't know. All right, GSQ, how would you feel about Zenkathy front for your that's Lucari? Fine. Okay. I, I think conceptually it, it represents the Klingons, you know, rescuing their brethren. Or killing them, one of the two. Well, it's you know, kind of liking you, uh, you, you gravity know, kills you. Before dishonor thing. It's the ultimate bacon overlord. All hail the ultimate bacon overlord. All hail. Hey. Bacon over everything. Hi, ultimate bacon overlord. How are you this evening? All right. If you would like to join GSQ for a little Zenkathy front. Providing I can find GSQ, there you are. Give me an X. I am hanging in there. I'm losing my voice again. My boss brought in this big bouquet of flowers from her garden, put it on my desk, and they smell unbelievably wonderful. But as they open during the course of the day, they drop pollen, and you can hear what my voice is just going <sighs> from my allergies. But it's hard to say yeah, no. Yeah, the, the, the smell is, is, is this uh, amazing aroma that fulfills your lungs and every uh, orifice. Wasn't there some aspect to a TNG episode where there was a sweet smell and it caused you to inhale deeply and it gave you a respiratory disease or something? Or I know it was one Star Trek. I thought it was TNG. I remember... That does sound familiar. The only one I remember like that was... Um, uh, this side of paradise in TOS, where oh, oh yeah. right, they, 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 the... they go to this planet that looks like the Garden of Eden, and yes. they realize that the plants have acid for sap, and and that if you try to eat any of the plants, it, it will literally uh, kill you. Well, and, no, and, but and, you and, and the pollen was probably poisonous. Too. But aren't you something. thinking of the one where Spock falls in love with um, what's her name? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. And that's the one. The plant, it was it was the the pollen or the spores in the plants that caused them to go all hippie. Yeah, but there's also the one that Mucin's talking about, which was the space hippies. Um, Journey to Eden, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Journey to Eden was uh, space hippies looking for a planet where uh, they they didn't have to follow any government's rules and where they could just live as a hippie mm -hmm. commune. Oh, I don't actually think I've seen that episode. Oh, and the plant the planet that they chose, they find out the reason why it was unclaimed by any of the galactic governments was that the biosphere was toxic to humanoid life. And that's what I was talking about earlier when I said that uh, they, they would get acid burns from touching the plants and stuff like that. Yeah, the one I'm thinking of was like, a oh, it's it makes everyone peaceful and tied to the planet and they don't want to leave. Yes, yes. I re vaguely recall that. I'm trying to remember which episode that was, but that was a different episode. It was It was this side of paradise. Um, hang on a second. Okay, I know which one it is. I, I did find it. It's Angel One is the one where there's a virus and it starts with Wesley playing on the holodeck, gets a snowball, throws it, it hits Picard. And at some point they've realized that something caused everyone to realize there was a slightly sweet scent in their organ and basically drawing the viral matter deep into their lungs. Angel One. Angel One. That's oh. yeah. That, that, that must have been the B plot in the episode. It was, it was. It was. Because yeah. the main plot was 
the planet known as Angel One and the uh, God. fact that the, a Federation uh, freighter crew had bypassed the uh, t territorial uh, limits and crashed their ship on the planet and mated with the inhabitants and you see where this is. Okay, its official title was Angel One, but its unofficial title was Cringe One, quickly followed by um, the the really bad one with Tasha. See, the, the, the biggest thing I, I, I had issue I had with the Angel One thing is that one, it, the, okay, the things the, I liked is that it was a culture that was different. It's, it, it's one of those things where, like, okay, this is an alien planet doing alien things for reasons I don't fully understand. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They never actually tell you the name of the species living on the planet. <laughs> Details. I didn't realize that until I decided to to make them a minor race in a a, a mod I was doing for a, a video game. And I, I decided to include them because the fact that in the episode you actually get a feel for the technological capabilities of this race. They don't have warp travel, but they have a lot of high tech stuff. Like their their preferred method of executing prisoners is to disintegrate them. Yes. It it's kind of well determined by the way uh, the set of verse who's got to be satalia said someone asked me if i've seen the dog bowl i didn't know he had that ability but um tish <sighs> go away there were some really bad puns in twitter today from i want to say it was from Stu, but it could have been from somebody else it was just a bad pun day well yeah, see, cause the, the, the Angel 1 episode was one of those where there was um, several things about the episode that made it kind of cringe. One of them is the fact that the, it's one of those alien monoculture episodes where they present four examples of an alien race, and the episode is structured around the idea that this is representative of the entire planet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 one of the worst offenders in in the alien monoculture group. But that is actually like the uh, the reason why I liked a, a Taste of Vengeance episode. Taste of Vengeance is Akamarians. Oh, okay, yes, yes. Because of the fact that the uh, uh, plot of the episode centered on the fact that the Akamarians don't actually have a central government. And that they don't actually all follow the same set of rules. <laughs> and that Picard's actual goal in the episode is to get them to try to at, at least stop killing each other. And it, it kind of sort of got to the point where, where they more or less had like a coalition that controlled enough of the planet that... It was a, a, a force of detente. Even if they didn't agree, they would at least uh, forego a direct conflict. But they still didn't like each other. And that was the entire reason why the gatherers decided to leave the homeworld and pillage the stuff as space pirates. Oh, Actually, the, the, that was not a bad episode. I thought it was well done. At a point where they were having a few too many cringy episodes. I, the, like I said, though, the, the thing with the Akamarians that really stuck with me is the fact that they did such a deep dive. The person who wrote it really wrote the Akamarians yeah. as a culture. Well, that's it. It wasn't a one-dimensional thing. And that's the issue with Angel One and, uh, God, what was the horrible uh, episode with uh, Tasha and uh, something uh, Honor? Uh, honor? Glory? Uh, God. I don't know. I, I I um I, I kind of sort of attempted to forget that one, but yeah, a alien code of honor uh, that um our one note alien monocultures get really really forgettable, especially yeah. alien monocultures that aren't interesting, but mm -hmm. which is part of why that uh uh one with um, Tasha fighting that duel was so boring is because the whole like problem of how to get the aliens to 
not murder each other over their own stupid laws. It's just like, how does a civilization with laws this screwed up exist in a, at a technological level where the Federation cares about their existence? My big determining factor on good script writing is, does every character in the series, or in that episode, wear the same outfit? Hmm. That's, That's another like, one that, that 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 gets really dumb. It's like the, the, the it's obvious that the prop department just mass produced the uh, a flavor of the week out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I look out my window, and yes, I'd say everybody out there is currently wearing t-shirt, shorts, and gym shoes. You would not confuse any two of them. You're talking no. um, like so, so slightly different color, slightly different size, or some, or worse, they're exactly the same color, and it's the jumpsuit, the brown jumpsuit with the squared off neckline and the zipper and the elasticized waist, and well, looks it's like a Power Rangers villain. <laughs> yes, uh, but they all wear the same thing, or the businessmen all have exactly the same suit. It, it, yeah, and that's actually one of the interesting things with the Angel One episode is that. While the Angel One people actually had a sort of like a racial theme to their outfits, they were, well, one, there actually wasn't a huge number of them, so they had to make them different. Otherwise, you, you know. But um, another thing with the Angel One episode that was super cringe is Riker going there. Why? Yeah, yep, yeah. yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. The, actually, the episode that is cringe in a weird way is the one called Justice, which is the one where oh, Wesley God. falls into oh. the plants. And the reason it bugs me is, oh my God, those things look so painful to wear. Ah. Well, well, well ah. the, the, the thing with Justice that really, really came to bug the hell out of me, who the crap came up with this system in universe? Oh, yeah. It's, it's like, how did this... Uh, a, uh, alien space computer communicate to the people what it wanted them to do. We, we I mean, run into that episode, from or a certain that issue. perspective, you can see the Justice episode as being a civilization where people are basically being functionally held at gunpoint and like, okay, this is what you have to do or you'll die. And they play along with it because they can't. Uh, yeah leave right right from that perspective it works but it's um, one of those things an... that it's just like super super forced analogy and it, it it's the like social analogy they, they tried to shoehorn into it, they made it. <laughs> yes uh yeah. isn't there some uh supporting novel or something that uh it, that uh for angel one one of the care no uh, uh for uh, justice uh, yeah, I believe uh, there that, was. Uh, yeah, that, that it was one of the caretakers. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that wouldn't surprise me. Uh, there are a lot of TNG novels. I have not read all of them. There's probably hundreds of them. <laughs> yes. I have some, not all of them. All right, so, we're, so we're going to do uh, uh, Zenkethi Front. So I need oh, okay. three more players. And we can keep talking while we're doing that. Feel Some free of the no. If you need. Pardon? You want to join us? Oh. Yeah, I'm on Raw right now. Okay. So some of the TNG novels I've read are, were actually like super clever because they took a slice of an episode and to, and expanded that slice of an episode into a full book. Give me an example of that if you've got uh, one off the top of your head. Okay, you remember the episode where Picard uh, finds the Janola and Dyson spear? Yes. Okay, in that episode, uh, uh, Picard beams Riker and uh, an away team down to uh, attempt to find something of value on the surface of the Dyson Sphere to understand the people that had built the place and so on and so forth. Okay. At the end of the episode, they get beamed back up to the ship right before Picard leaves the Dyson Sphere. Mm hmm. At no point between beaming down and beaming back up does Picard do anything more than say, hi, how are you doing, to the, the away team. This book basically just follows the story from the perspective of the away team. Yeah, that, that's, that's a great way to handle a book. I mean, there's things going Super on down there. Super clever. And I, 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 that was one of my favorite TNG novels. All right, I've got room for I, one I, more person for okay, and Kathy Front. Okie dokie. My, my favorite TNG novel will always be 
U squared. Absolutely, you're correct. Imzadi is good. Imzadi two is okay, but Imzadi is good, and uh, Q squared is still the best book of those. Oh no, GSQ! I did not see your hydrate redeem. Hang on a second here. Da, 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 da. Okay, GSQ has redeemed a mom hydration. Let's see what I've got here. I've got almost a full passion fruit. If that will work for you, so hang on a sec. And to be fair, I'll finish off the honey peach. <sighs> honey peach is really good. Honey peach is really, really good. So we have Aha Honey Peach. And LaCroix Passion Fruit. I found out LaCroix now makes a, um, excuse me, is it LaCroix? Yeah. Pineapple Passion Fruit. Which is really good. Needs a little bit of rum, but you know, really tasty. All right, we got a full team here. I'm going to set us up for a little Zen Kathy front. Weebo. Weebo. Yeah. Weebo. The enthusiasm. Weebo. Does anybody else have stuff they need to do tonight? Not in a way. I need to do phaser damage on the ground. Well, we can do something groundish. Does anybody need to do an event? Anybody? Well, I mean, to technically, I have a tetrian damage ground thing, but well, well then we should do something on the ground. Yeah. We could do Operation Wolf. We could do Bug Hunt. We could do a lot of stuff. If you do something an event, that'll uh. help me too. Okay. Have a great night, everyone. Take care, Musen. It was so good to talk to you. Thanks for being here. Have a good night, man. Yeah, if you need to do an event, we can do an event on the ground easily enough. I have a polar on damage and whatever I can join for that. Okay, cool. Let's see. Got that. I've got that. Thank you there at Link. Mom, uh, enjoy. Okay, I will go take a peek at it. Once we're done here, that is. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. Oh, well, that's why. Well, there's your problem. Yeah, I was trying to. Kathy's expecting to live. I got a bomb. I'm going north. But uh, so, so someone could blow up this base I'm next to. Where are you? I mean, I'm I'm uh, distracting that's in Kathy. I got it. Seriously, you're going to do that to me. <sighs> These St. Kathy battleships are pain in the ass to kill. Yes, they are, and I can't launch my bomb. I'm so annoyed. Seriously, that, that, that one sat at like zero hull for I don't know how long. That's why I like uh, the... Uh, the pet build because mm. 
they don't do a lot of damage, but they hit an awful lot of times. Oh, oh yeah, I actually have pets on this thing. I forgot that part. Oops. I'm also annoyed I can't use my image refractors. For whatever reason. Fine. It's because you're from in, uh, you're, you're, you live in Indianapolis? Yes, currently. For the next three days. Then I'll be living in Chicago. Then I'll be back to Indianapolis. Then I'll be back to Chicago. The next month or so. I think mom lives in both cities at, at, uh, at the same time. I do. I am capable of being in two places at one time. There's a transporter accident. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm mom Vix. Finally! Whew! Man, that one did not want to launch. That's only the first one I've got down? Okay. Why did I just stop? That's weird. Uh, Who's got the bomb? Where are you? I see you. I'm heading towards, I think, middle. Okay. I'm just keep killing things that have bombs near the star base at the moment. Ah, there we are. I'm trying to manually click on it, and Kathy ship I kept clicking on some <laughs> Yes, I do that. Pets. Were you able to get that I mean, one launched there? Yep, yeah, I got All it. All right. Thanks for cover. No problems. Let's see. Yeah, I'm actually using Yellowstone shuttles on this ship. Oh, that's so nice. I like them. Oh, right. I killed the guy holding the bomb, so I get the bomb. Yep. So, go, go shoot things. I'll take care of that doing? cruiser. Cruiser down. Silly and Kathy think they can hit me. Okay, why is it not letting me launch the bomb? Because it hates you. Same reason mine won't let me launch my bomb. If you've got bacon of Kalos, it's a great way to distract him while you launch the bomb. But you don't have a lot of time. <laughs> Nothing was actually me. I, I I'm not entirely sure what the reason is. Hey, for some reason, I can't pick up either bomb. Do you have one by any chance? No, I destroyed two of the ships, and oh. I guess other people grab them. That's fine. Okay. I, I, I'm having lag spikes at the moment. I'm like I. Rubber banding, all Ooh. stuff. Okay, I've got a bomb and I'm heading to the southernmost. Uh, oh, well, that's the one I'm at. I think. Oh, okay, well then I will go to the second least. I will go to the southeastern one then. Ooh. Hopefully. Now I'm not going to kill the Tinkathy jerks that we're next to. Yeah, there we go. What's left? Uh, the one I'm heading to is the one that's left. Okay. There it is. Like I said, my whole image refractors just aren't coming up anymore. It's really annoying. Um, okay, now we can take it out. I think I remember reading something in patch notes at some point that things like whole image refractors or intelligence team that are supposed to give you stealth or mask you from enemies are no longer usable when under certain conditions that are supposed to prevent you from cloaking. Well, like, right now it works just fine, but while I'm trying to cloak while carrying the bomb, it won't let me. Yeah, same thing. I can't use Intel team to hide uh, while I have the bomb anymore. This is ah, that's annoying. Device, so obviously the internet didn't fully die, Ooh. You do sound like a robot, Mark. You are a robot. I, Why do I, I need to do that? And switch
you guys hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Yep, I okay. heard you. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just put in because to, to, I, I can hear you. Are you guys still in the TFO? Yep, just about done. Okay, well, just wait a few more seconds. Let's see if, so I can okay, now we're pretty much done with our TFO. A few little ships uh, here and there. Uh, I was just hoping to actually get back into it before it's over. Yeah, try getting in. I won't leave. See if it'll let you back in. I won't leave either. It just like, pause loading character list. Okay, well, we'll hang out here. We've got roughly two minutes before it'll kick us, so try it. See if you can get in. Hmm, I think I got too much stuff here. It's never such a thing as too much stuff. Oh, on occasion. In case, yeah, in my case. People don't have that problem. Yeah. Normal people don't have that problem. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't get it. It, it. it, I mean, everything except Star Trek Online seems to be working properly. Hmm. Anybody else out there having issues? I am not. Oh, okay, there. I, it finally uh, loaded. Okay. Well, we'll stick around. We still have a minute plus to go. Uh, well, I mean, if, if it... Oh, it didn't even put me uh, back in the TFO. Okay. We can leave then, folks. I, apparently, it, it just took too long for me to, to get back. Give me a second here. I need to check in here. Oh my gosh! Thank you, Id. Definitely gonna listen to that one. Oh, I definitely didn't get any re uh, 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 rewards for doing the TFO either. Ah! Get all the way to the end, crash out, and and don't get uh, logged in before it's uh, over. Oh well. I blame Canada. <laughs> At least it's not like in DCUO where it literally never even attempts to put you back into a, a queued mission that mm. you uh, uh, got kicked out of due to uh, internet problems. If I heard correctly, we have a couple of people who need to do a daily and we have some ground damage to do. I think that call any character who actually uses tech. Well, I think that goes for uh, Operation Wolf that should cover all of that. So if you need to do ground damage or um, ground damage I need to or do another Lucari mission if we're going to do them let's see well if we can hang on a little while I mean the problem with Lucari missions is we have three that suck and Zenkethi front <laughs> he that suck and Zenkethi front I like the way you put that well, I don't see a better way to put it and, and, and it's not like people like Sinkethi Front. I like Sinkethi Front. I have one ship that does it well. I would probably have to say Sinkethi Front's the least objectionable. Yes. Yeah, okay, yes, if you're going to put it that way. That lesser of, I'm not sure how many evils. <laughs> okay, oh wait, no, in this case it would be four. Okay, so we're going to do, let's see, somebody needs to do a daily, so... We have two options for ground. We can do Operation Wolf or Forged in Fire. Both are ground. Forged in Fire is one of those where if everyone on the team is actually looking for prisoners, picking up the prisoners is easy. Yeah, yeah, you just have to be aware of it. I mean, I, I like Forged in Fire. I think it's a good... I haven't done it on this character yet, so it would be a good thing for me to do. Oh, also, uh, here's the thing that's very important to remember about Forged in Fire. When Lita starts doing that... Um, uh, lava puke stuff. Um, you have only a few seconds yeah. to save them. Otherwise, they're toast, and you can't save them, and you don't really have a reason to stay down there. Nope, nope. Uh, GSQ, you said you needed to do a daily. Yes, give me one moment. Okay. I, I actually tested that that once in a run where I knew that the other players weren't uh, bothering with saving them, so I was actually just w going around looking for prisoners to save and letting mm -hmm. the uh, other people shoot things 
and I ran around on the bottom level uh, for several seconds after the lava puke and actually saw one of them disintegrate. Oh! It's like, just yeah. harsh. It's sad. Yeah, I know, but... Okay. I'm... I could really use it if you, if you don't mind. Yeah, let me just get GSQ in there first, and... I'm off to find food. Oh, oh, also, if if you have a a a, 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 a good build, surviving the lava puke is actually easy. If you have certain things, <laughs> I'm I think adapt will actually uh, uh, make you immune to it too. Hmm. Definitely have to give that one a try. I haven't done Forge and Fire yet. When, so when, 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 when I was doing it as Rappuccini, um, either. Either it was adapt making me immune to it, or I just had such a high regeneration rate. <laughs> there is that, that part, that yeah. I, I was shrugging off uh, the damage. But I, I was just, like, wandering around looking at things, and my health was not going down. Let's see. Let me grab some better toys here. Go that way. All right. So you've played uh, Salt on Terek Nor, haven't you, GSQ? Uh, yes. Okay, same concept, but we're going to be in a very small, confined area. There's some shooty, but the thing that has to go on in the first section is you need to run into every little room to try and find the three, uh, pris uh, not prisoners, but refugees that are hiding. All of the side rooms. Right. Also, so remember that they can be killed by the enemies. Right, so you want to get in there fast and get them out. Then we get in, and we're going to go through... Um, one of the airlocks and into a separate section of Tarek Noor. Similar concept there. There's three people hiding. You have to get, you know, you have to get to them and basically tag them before they get killed. Then we're going to go back into the main part of Tarek Noor. Same concept. Bigger area. Check in all the doorways. I think there's three more here. Am I correct? Well, there's 20 total. Right. I think I it's... I genuinely am not sure where all of them are those first parts might have three might have four i personally can't vouch for it i want to say it's three 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 four four if i remember correctly mm -hmm. i could be wrong but yeah there's basically just only three or four in the first few rooms so you do want to go into every room possible and just and you have to stay there and tag them otherwise they don't count yeah those the, those little side rooms on ds9 where there's a uh, useless vendors, you need to look at those. They're not useless. Okay, um, let me rephrase that. Vendors that I personally don't use. There you go. Big difference in those. Alright, I'm going to queue us up for Forged in Fire. Wee woo! Wee woo! Wee woo! Here goes Excellent. nothing! <laughs> Exothermic radiation is going to be really useful in this one. Maybe I'll take a different weapon. Oh, also, it turns out that the uh, second uh, Risa kit, uh, because of the fact that it has as one of its uh, special abilities immunity to fire damage, <gasps> and this is fire damage. Oh, darn it. I don't have it on this tune. I'll have to go grab that. It, ju it, it just straight up fully makes you immune to the lava puke. Well, I have got my uh, Lucari piezoelectric I, wrist the, device. Uh, uh, Lucari proto uh, reactive personal shield. And you got the, it. Your fault. And the Undine Biotech armor, so I, I it would probably take a while for me to die in, in the uh, lava puke at best. <laughs> Are you having fun with that knife? It's a good weapon. Have, have fun. <laughs> yeah. right, it looks like you're trying to stab me in the back and just failing. Missing. Or or, 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 or or just like, like tinking on the armor. It's like, why? Why can't I stab a hole in this? <laughs> Hi there, buddy. Ooh, I got my Healy Rays on. You're going to completely eliminate the, the, the positive benefit of shields for you guys. Because I'm, I'm a poisoning monster in this character. Oh, the, the, this is um, button. this this is a uh a, well they're not refugees they're actually like the um or uh, operative yeah hmm. they're, they're they're basically the um equivalent of troops for 
They're like coalition special forces sort of thing. Yeah. We've only or gotten just, one so far. Here's one. Okay. Like so that's, that's three between sitting the three of us. In the uh, uh, corner here. I think this one's a Vulcan. Are they Vulcan or Roth? They all wear the same uh, black and gray uniforms, which means that, yes, they do blend into shadows quite well. That's three between the three of us, right? Okay. Are we ready to move on? I only see two up on the board. Oh, uh, yeah. Two between the three of us. Yeah. I see two. Yeah. Uh, make I sure they got know. tagged. I, I'm, I'm genuinely not sure what the right numbers are. I, I thought we got three the first oh. time through here. Let's, I don't uh, see let's anyone. Move on and catch up with okay. Those. Well, I'm I'm not doing anything. I'm just down at the top, the, top, the beginning of the next level. Okay. Okay. Well, on to the next level then. Part of me wonders if one of them got hit with a flotide grenade. It's possible. But we are running on basic. It shouldn't be killing them that fast. I'm going to go left. Maybe. Trying to go left, and of course then I get disoriented. I always got, got, got to check the catwalk okay. in this area. Mm. Okay, there's one up here. Okay. Yeah, you got to stay with them until they... Say that they're rescued. I, I'm going up on the catwalk. Okay. Found one. An, okay, so that's two in either here. Either an Andorian or an Anar. And someone grenaded me while I was beaming them out. I got a third one over oh, here. Th th she's gone. And this one is an Andorian. So that should give us five all told. So GSQ, this is where it gets kind of similar to that first section of um, <clears throat> Tarek Noor because you've got to keep your operatives one. safe. There, there, there was two of them on, on the balcony. This one's a Cardassia. So I there was a bunch in this one then. Okay. Wow, so that means there isn't a consistent number in all of them. With that train damage, yes. When, when I stop uh, uh, shooting things, I'm going to swap back to my real weapon. Then. Also, this is an area where the the, the ones that you see here will often be hiding in corners that you don't even realize at first glance are places mm -hmm. you can walk. Mm -hmm. Like, I actually found one of them behind How one of these stupid metal tanks. Oh, yeah. Own fire is hurting me. Yeah, that can happen. Ah. There's nobody it's even alive stupid. around me, and I'm Dying. still dropping me due to damage. I tried. Where is Lestia? I am attempting to, to draw aggro. Thank you to whoever. You are welcome. Well, th at least they're not cringing like they did in Terraknor. They're just twining. No, you're not. How are dead people hitting me with their stasis fields? They're special. Well, they're only that, a that's little actually, dead. That, that's actually one of those things where uh, a lot of the time the game will, will see the ability as having been queued and thus uh, play out the ability. Like grenades. When people throw a grenade at you... I, It'll still hit you if you kill them while they're halfway through throwing the grenade. Yeah, I do like it when you kill a ship, the torpedo's on its way to you, and then it just disappears. Yeah. 
this is one of my few characters where I, I did a hardcore weapon build and I'm not actually using the right weapon for the build at the moment because I was doing a Tetrian Damage Endeavor, which yeah. was, quite frankly, uh, doing a Tetrian Damage Endeavor with this build is like using uh, a nuclear bomb to blow out a candle. That, that tends to be uh, less than effective because you don't know if you blew out the candle or not after it went off. Well, 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 there's no candle there, so hey. <laughs> if you have a candle after a nuclear detonation goes off, that's a pretty badass kid. So there's a competition, or there used to be a competition at uh, MTU, MIT, on uh, for new freshman engineers, how fast can you light the charcoal grill? Oh. You've seen, I, have you seen those? I've uh, heard of one where someone poured liquid oxygen. That's my favorite one, charcoal. yes. Completely ignited all the charcoal and the grill. Half the grill. Oh no, half the entire the grill. grill. It, there was it's just, like, yeah, it was basically, there's nothing left. It was amazing. There's a film of it and it just so overloads the sensors that you can't see anything. Where am we going now? Why, Out of here. why would the they give earth. freshmen access to liquid oxygen? Because. It's not that much. Yep. That's don't. the funny part with this. Is it, is the amount of liquid oxygen needed was you know, this surprisingly be little weapons. yes it would be it, it it absolutely would be you're right that reminds me i need to do the same do we need to check again for bodies in this section everyone yes do. okay uh, maybe not back where we came from okay but, uh, yeah i'm not seeing anything in the older sections definitely in the new side rooms here Okay, well, like, I'll take the left side. Any place we haven't already looked in. There's one. Yep. Help. Help? Did somebody need help? Uh, I was saying. I was just saying no. Oh, okay. Sweeping. I think you're having clear. a really bad day. Ooh, we get the good part coming up really soon. Mm, here's one. One more. I just shot two guys standing on the. Oh, oh wait. Don't, yeah, yeah. I was going to say it's like don't forget the circular doors. I have found them inside here. So like in the airlocks? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I haven't been checking in the airlocks. Oops. There's one. Um, no, that's just a room. And any door that opens. And. Girl. <laughs> I had a laugh he jumped over that and just tripped and fell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I'm dead. No. Yay. That's my I, 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 I wonder if um, uh, Jeremy uh, appreciates just how many times people have assimilated him. Oh, I'm that sure. And, 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 and that is how you completely nerf a boss. Just throw them into the air. They can't do anything for like five seconds. Yes, it is curling there. There. Not anymore. <laughs> there and there and there. And, and uh, there's a few pieces over there. <laughs> over there, over there, and up there. Yep. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. D don't, 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 don't forget this room that has the creepy Orion guy in it. Which room? There are non creepy Orion guys. Oh, well, 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 see, 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 see this one with, like, fishbowl-shaped window? Oh, yeah, that one, where that one dude is. In DS9. Why did my screen turn yellow? Somebody's got an effect running. It's is me, that sorry. <laughs> it's okay. But what effect is that? I, I, I'm asking because I'm curious, not because... Where's I'm the curious. creepy room? It's the one with, like, the little fishbowl, the little moon fishbowl. Oh, that one. Garrick's. Okay. Yeah, that's where I just was, and that's where everything went all yellow, and I thought, that's I, I mean, creepy. I mean, sometimes you, you'll, you'll see someone in there, sometimes stall. Okay, how do we get into ore processing? Uh, the back to the same elevator. Oh. Whoever was that day, it was isolation, isolation field generator. Oh, oh, okay then. Okay. No, wrong way. Wrong elevator. What do you mean, wrong the, elevator? The, the elevator next to the fishbowl window. Oh, the elevator next. Thank you. Wrong lever! This one! 
Ow, ow. Okay, across from it, not next to. Okay, I see it. Oh, so you're, you get to play with fire, and you're immune, but that's just, that's not fair. I don't think she likes being let on fire, because she decided to light me on fire, and I took a lot more damage than she did. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, going to check for prisoners first. I found Sorry. one. I found one. Yep, I found one as well. Trying to keep up here. Stop auto targeting lead out. one. Look and underneath the, the staircases. Seriously. Hey, I'm, I'm on fire, fire. Lita. All right. Hey, uh, I, I saw, saw someone just get Those beamed out three. under the staircase. That's good. Yep. Um, I think we've gotten four total down here. So yeah. Far. Yeah, I think we and, had to... And of course, look behind the cargo boxes oh, yeah. if Here you can go. see one. what you're doing with all of the fire. Alright, there's five total for the bottom floor. I got one up here. But, okay, cool. Actually, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Don't hit the console. Uh, uh, l l uh, I'm going there's to distract... Here. I'm getting... I'm going to distract Lita. You guys, um, get all the guys on the upper floors. Okay. This way we'll, we'll be able to, you know, count, uh, to, to make sure we, we got it right. I found... Um, let's get three I people found, up here. I found another one up okay. here on the side. Uh, there's level. another one right here. I'm going up to the next floor. We, uh, all we got all 20. Yeah. We got all 20, yeah! Woo! Sweet. Push the button. Oh, 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 I forgot to move when Lita lit me on fire. Ah, screw it. Oh, uh, the, the uh, uh, respawn is just at the door where you uh, enter the room. Okay, fine. Now serving a side of Hosperon extra crispy. That's crap. Your fire is so much more powerful than mine. I'm doing 2,000 damage with mine, but no, you're doing more damage. That doesn't make sense. Oh, is she going to do the lava puke? Yeah, she's about to, I think. Okay. Yeah, when Ray starts saying that, you know... That puts GTFO. Uh, yeah. No, not, not that holding. Fire. <laughs> ah. Like uh, the, the 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 staircase over here in this corner I'm currently standing under. Mm-hmm. I've actually found one under the staircase. Like hiding behind this column here. Oh, okay. I suspected that that there's a preset uh, list of places they can spawn, and I think that the devs may have actually just had the uh, uh, game uh, choose twenty out of the entire list and not sure. pay attention to which floor they're on. That makes it fun. That way, it's um, you can't plan for it. It, it, it's also easy from a coding perspective because you, you, you just feed a list into the, the uh, uh, RNG and the RNG just picks 20 entries off the yep. list. That's a way and, to and do it's it. It's fine as long as you, it doesn't pick any duplicates. Back, Lita. Blah. Back. Get back. Oh, hey, I, I, have, I have now dealt 200,000. Anti pro wait, is that say two hundred thousand or three hundred thousand? Oh, three hundred thousand anti proton damage on ground. Sweet. Congratulations. Hey Lita, hey Lita, you're fired. <laughs> Mr. Bond. Your puns are terrible. Yeah, wait. the the, uh, the the main weapon I'm currently using is uh the uh, uh low by hand hand blaster that does anti proton damage. We have a first time comment from real life Thor. Um, never played this, but love Star Trek. I uh, love stopping the streams when I can. I assume that's what you meant was it's never. So, what, so you've never played uh, Star Trek Online? Hmm. 
hmm, we can help you with that. I mean, it, it's a free-to-play game. You can yeah, really. Easily. Oh, well, getting the okay. game's easy. Playing it's a little more complicated on occasion. Well, I mean, there, there is definitely a uh, learn-to-play element. There is, which is why there's a lot of really good people who will help you play and have fun with it. Multiple YouTube channels exist just to give people <laughs> advice on how to play the game. Oh yeah, so true. Oh yeah, and and we, we got a perfect score because of course we do. Yay! Yeah, that was nice. I do believe that uh, someone said they needed one more Lucari event. Was that you, Frost? Yeah, it's not a big deal. Yeah. I can get it anytime. That was interesting. Anything else? That was interesting. Yeah. Well, it's like the other Tarek Noor one where there's just so much visual going on and if you're auto-targeting, it's really easy to get turned around all the time. Do yeah. not turn on auto-attack <laughs> on, uh, on grab. I really do, would not recommend that unless it's something specific to a particular build that gives you a reason to use it. Oh, and on most of those, it's just like, I'm going this way and I forget to turn off the auto-target and all of a sudden I'm going that way and it's like, no, no, that way. That other guy. Direction. Yeah. Oh, it's so annoying. Your other left. <laughs> the other other left. Yes, the other other left. But I did enjoy it, though. Yeah, it, it was, was a fun one. Fun. And it should give you your daily. And it gives some ground damage. And it gives you your ground kills. And if you had Terrans in your repertoire for the day, then you've got your Terrans for the day. But yeah, that, that, that whole thing of learning how to find the uh, prisoners in this map is... Uh, the, bit, the the only real learning curve to it, yeah. other than, you know, don't stand and stuff when Lita starts lighting things on fire. Well, the, running the numbers today, it was very clear. It's not like a pattern of three, three, four, 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 or anything like that. It was just random, because there were, what, ten in the last section alone? Mm -hmm. There's usually yeah. a lot of them in the uh, uh, final row. Yeah, but we only found two in the very first sequence, and previously I'd seen three in there, so it is random, so it, you know... You just got to check every room and then figure that you did the best you could. But boy, does that make it more interesting. Sweep and clear, sweep and clear. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's see if we can do one more. Uh, Zen Kathy Front has got two minutes before we can run it again, Frost. Can you hang on two minutes or do you want to do... I can hang on forever. Because otherwise it's Gravity Kills or Draenor Beach, or Draenor Gauntlet, rather. Which is fine, we did it the other night as a TFO, but it's kind of boring. It's long, and that's the problem with it, I think. Yeah, and you never know and who I, you're going to fight. I'm just saying, I got decent grip strength. I can't hold on to that forever. I'll make sure that I... Yeah, I was uh, whacking away on that so hard my fingers are going a little tingly today. Like, no, stop t t t touching things. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if we're going to do a show tomorrow night or not because we're going to do the live stream or the watch party at 2 a.m. Uh, also, there may or may not be a uh, 10 forward weekly. I, I yeah, I know uh, Tull's still gone, right? Because he was doing the move last week and this week was uh, Star Trek, or sorry, Star Wars, right? Isn't Correct. that this week? So he won't be on, so I don't know that there will be one, and I haven't seen anything else popping up there. And and also, one thing I did get a confirmation for Ooh, is that hut, Julia hut. has no interest in attempting to stream in Kale's place. Oh! Chef Smitty is raiding with a party of two. Hi, Chef Smitty. How are you? Hey, we could run the show for them. <laughs> okay, it'd be chaos, but it'd be fun. Hi, Chef Smitty. How are you doing tonight? I don't have an emotional character. You don't have an emotional <laughs> character. That's uh, crazy. I have one emotional character, and that's it. What's, what's, that what's an emotional character? I don't know, but I, I'm trying to do the hollow novel code fragment. Oh, okay. So you're looking for the attribute on one of yours that says emotional. Yeah, and I have none. Oh, my. Oh, uh, awesome. oh what, what kind of duty officer do you need? It doesn't actually have a, a specification on duty. You obviously. just need somebody who's emotional. In order to get a success, it needs to be emotional. Uh, oh. 
Hey, congratulations on leveling your Delta okay, tune. So, so, so it just hey. says any and has uh, emotional as one of the uh, a success or crit traits. Yeah, moderate success, emotional. So you want somebody who's only moderately emotional. Emotional, um, but not irrational. Ah. <laughs> uh, um, that'd be me. Speaking of emotional but rational, ha has anybody else felt that uh, Spock and T'Pring, is it T'Pring in uh, Strange New Worlds, are a little emotional for being non-emotional? Yes. Well, he, well, he, yeah, here's, just a little. <laughs> the, the number one thing uh, that we learned about Vulcans in TOS is that Vulcans have emotions. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we know they have emotions. They just repress them, control them. Okay, so... Um, Thank you, Chef Smitty, for stopping by. You have a great night if you're not sticking around. Take care of yourself. Have fun. Party any, hardy. Any kind of emotional duty officer will do for this, I guess, huh? Oh, don't worry about it. I, 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 I've got something else in, in mind. I mean, because I have several items that I could... Well, I do appreciate the, the concern and the offer. Uh, I mean, you, you could have one of my uh, mass-produced Cation flight deck officers... Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, I mean, I don't know. What, I don't have a litter box that big, so I don't know if I can have them on the ship. <laughs> oh boy, I had to. <clears throat> oh goodness. Um, let's see. Who have I got for emotional here? I really didn't need help. I, I appreciate. I really do. But I mean, I, it's just one thing that I don't really need. Oh, well, I mean, like I said, though, it's, just, it's it's one of those things where it's like, yes, it's a purple duty officer. Oh, my God, I've got a Baku. But it's not that big a deal. I, I have, have Baku. I didn't know I had a Baku. Uh, How interesting. Ah, no, that's where she came from. Duty officer packs okay. Baku. Even my Hamlet, Prince of Space, is emotional. Prince of Space. Okay, you guys know Prince of Space, right? No. Oh, mm -hmm. It's a bad Japanese, kind of like a Sentai movie. Um, it, it's slightly after uh, the uh, kaiju movies, and they were getting into various uh, character-based ones rather than monster-based ones. And one of them was the guy who's the helps the little kids learn how to shine shoes to raise money because they're orphans now. And he his alternative role is Prince of Space. And he takes on Crankor. Please tell me. Oh. <sighs> Drunken heretic, where are you when I need you? You would know who Crankor is. Prince of Space and Crankor. Go go watch them. They're terrible. So that's a reason to watch them? Is because oh, yeah. Bad. It's stunningly bad. Oh, he's teaching us how to shine shoes, and we're very happy. And the kids are just amazing. And Crankor looks like a chicken... Wow. How can you not know Prince of Space? Because it's space, and I wouldn't want to be the king of it. Mystery Science Theater 3000, Prince of Space, 1959. It is an old movie, yes. My parents are older than that. Well, I'm not. There you go. I don't need to cut there you go. Prince of Space. Prince <laughs> of Space. Oh All right. It's like saying you're a prince of, of a sandbox. I mean, good. You don't get anything for it, but it's nice that you have that title. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do one more Zen Kathy front, and then I am going to work on something and go to bed to make up for the fact I got five hours of sleep last night. But I figured out why the doors weren't working last night. You and your like. Hey, I I was driving home from class in Bloomington, so it's almost eleven, and I'm falling asleep and coming off Route 74, going on to 65, and my boss calls me and goes, "Hi, the doors won't lock." And I'm thinking, "Have somebody been sitting there since three in the afternoon and you didn't think to call me for eight hours?" But no, somebody had worked late last night, and as they were walking out, <clears throat> they realized the doors weren't locking. So, go in. Oh, 
got it, and then found out somebody had been trying to set the door, so all we'd have to do is run a little macro to make them turn off early on holidays. Oh, 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 oh yeah, that, that, that reminded me of something. H have you ever watched the movie Star Crash? Don't think so. Uh, Star uh, uh, Crash? A lot of people... It, it was actually a David Hasselhoff movie. Back oh, my here. God. <laughs> well, that would be inappropriate. Well, um, yes, yes, it is. Uh, see, one of the things that, that's funny about it is that a lot of people uh, think it's a Star Wars ripoff. It's just that they started filming it before Star Wars actually aired. But there's there's real people in it. Christopher uh, Plummer is in it. Marjo Gortner's in it. Yeah, I know. It, it came out the year after Star Wars did. Yeah. Uh, for, for its like theatrical release, but it's just like one of the things. Just like so, these were being filmed at uh, almost at the same time. Yeah. And, and I huh. Uh, well, well, one, one thing. Oh, I have I, seen I, this. I, I, I find the need to remind people is that the visuals of Star Wars, while a lot of people think of them as iconic and blah blah blah. Are actually just 70s sci fi. Yeah. Let's see here. Okay. So Star Crash has a very similar look to it because, again, 70s sci fi. Outlaw smugglers Stella Star and Acton managed to pick up a castaway while running from the authorities, who turns out to be the only survivor from a secret mission to destroy a mysterious superweapon designed by the evil Count Zarth Arn. The smugglers are soon recruited by the Emperor of the Galaxy to complete the mission, as well as to rescue the Emperor's son, this part I remember, who has gone missing. Trivia! The filmmakers were highly reluctant to allow John Barry to see the film in case he decided to quit the project. Famous quotes from the movie, The Emperor. You know, my son, I wouldn't be Emperor of the Galaxy if I didn't have some powers at my disposal. Imperial battleship, halt the flow of time. I hear a raid. Ooh, peace, X, peace. It's raiding with a party of 53. Woo, hi, guys. Didn't that one have Christopher Plummer as the Emperor of the, of the Galaxy? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, he was the I've Emperor seen, of the Galaxy. I've it is. The first half of Woo, it. thank you for the follow. Y yeah, it's... Stunningly bad. It's right down there. Wow. Thank you so much for the follows, everybody. I hope you guys had a wonderful stream tonight. Dark Paths. You know, I misread that as it came up, Dark Paths, and saw, thought it said Dark Pants. And I'm thinking, okay, specific, but very cool. Star Crash is one of those things where I'm g I genuinely can't say for sure whether it is or isn't a bad movie because there no, are no. certain things in it where I'm like, Oh, please, that's amateur work. It's, but there, it's David Hasselhoff in a movie. Well, well like, 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 for example, it's, it's like they have droids in the movie as enemies that uh, the heroes have to fight. Eric Director, thank but you very much for the follow. The droids look like Muppets made of tinfoil. <laughs> well, yeah. And they move like Muppets made of tinfoil. It's ew, gross. But I, um, I, How do Muppet, Muppets made of tinfoil move? You have to use your imagination there. Um, how is Stowe today? Stowe is awesome today because it's Stowe and we love Stowe. Well, well, well. Uh, other than the fact that I ha uh, got DC uh, Mermaid Splasher, thank you. Okay, if we want bad movies, Space Mutiny. <laughs> oh, good. Somebody knows Space Mutiny. Space Mutiny. Space Mutiny. It is. Amazing. Good night, everyone. Good night, GSQ. Yeah, Thanks awesome for being night. here. You go have a great night. You too. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh yeah. The, the, the other thing with Star Crash is that... Um, what's the name Star Crash mean? I don't know. It actually has an in-universe meaning. No. You don't find out until the ending of the movie. Hang on. Let's see if I can find it here. Uh... But oh, it it's not in the trivia. I'm not seeing uh, it. it. In in the uh, uh, fictional setting of Star Crash, uh, Star Crash is used as a term for ramming something at warp speed. <laughs> uh, that's the way they destroy the super weapon. Is th that the Emperor ha uh, has something that's actually not a starship. 
but can uh, tr travel through hyperspace and uses it as uh, a kinetic energy weapon. Uh, uh, it, it goes into a hyperspace jump and, and then just like exits hyperspace directly on top of the uh, uh, super weapon they needed to destroy. Whoa, oh, so we've cool. never seen that happen before. Yeah, it, it just like goes boom. And they actually had reasonably good special effects for that part of the movie anyways. But that was... The budget was $4 million. Really? In 79. Yeah, but still. Yeah, I'm, oh, yeah. All right. It's, they, they released in 79. 77, 77. Yeah, Dark Pass. Um, and I, I love my MST3K. Muppets made of tinfoil move crunchly, says Nappy's Puppets. Yeah, yes, they, they, they don't move smoothly at all. Well, having your Muppets move poorly can be a thing, a la, um... I mean, because they're, they're, they're droids, so having them ha use different movement patterns than humans makes sense. It's just that the droids are moving, like... using movement patterns that are just weird. Well, I can't think of a good way to describe it. Just... Think of Spaceballs, where they did it deliberately badly, but it worked perfectly because it was deliberately terrible. For yeah, some things. Star, Star Crash was one of those things where part of the reason why it feels weird and cringy today is that it had a lot of the tropes of 60s and 70s sci-fi that people didn't like. Uh, in, in, e even at the time, people didn't think it was great writing. No, no. Great, great writing wasn't key to most science fiction movies for a long time. Like, like, for one, it's like they have this guy who's a celebrated king of the galaxy, except he's seemingly not someone most he, people even know exists. He's I Prince of Space. I, I don't really understand how that part of the, the, the movie's logic went. That part really, truly escaped me. It's like, but also, it's, it's like, he's like, see, this is the wisdom of the king of the galaxy. Sometimes you have to make sacrifices to preserve what you care about. Oh yeah, when I say sacrifices, I'm talking about the Star Crash thing at the end of the movie, and the sacrifice being a city that had been supposedly something that that was like one of the like shining crown jewels of the Empire or something. Oh well. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do Zinkethi front. So give me an X. I know Frost, you need Zinkethi front, right? On roll. Yes. I, okay. My let's. Wife had to ask me a question. Very, very How dare she? Where are you? Where are you? Did you disappear on me? Uh, I, my wife asked me a question, so I didn't know what that was going to entail, so I went offline. Okay. But I'm going back on right now. All right. Well, very strange questions. I see Mark has logged on there. Hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> no, you got you to say it right. I can't say it right. I can't say it right either. Alpha, you're in charge. Say hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. No, no, no. Somebody. <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. I can't pretend to be... Um, there you are. Long Island. Isn't he from There's Long Island? A, Tommy Which Wiseau? Guy? No. Yeah. Which voice am I supposed to be doing? Tommy Wiseau from oh, The Room. I don't know who that is. Oh, that oh. That was oh, one of the worst uh, movies ever made. Yes, yes. Go watch The Room. It's right up there with Birdemic. Uh, Except Birdemic at least, I think, understood that it, at some point they figured out something was bad there. I have room for uh, three more people if anybody else would like to do another run at uh, Zenkathy Front. I could, I guess. Only if you want to. Otherwise we can pick up some poor fool who wants to join us. Uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where I switch characters to someone who would be better at Zinkethi Front than yeah. Zekoth. So, 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 because Zekoth's currently uh, uh, Leah's side ship is a battle sentry ship, which is great in missions where you don't need to run around so much. Yeah, I get that one. Like that, 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 you? That, that Mars mission where you, you're you have all of the like uh, people to rescue. It's like okay, sure, F fly circles, pick up people, uh, send them on uh, to things. Did I just send and you an invitation? 
Yes. Okay. There we go. Yay. Uh, and uh, then I, I can just like park on top of the uh, star base for the final part. Yeah. And then just blow the heck out of anything that gets near the star base. Well, you could do that with Zenkethi in front of you. Just sit on top of the base, but then it's not terribly effective. But you give good protection to the base. Uh, uh, well, also in Zenkethi front, though, is that those stupid protomatter charges would eat you alive if you're not moving. That's a good point. All you folks who've come over to visit, hi. Would anybody like to join us for Zenkethi front? We're happy to have you join us. Anybody from our guys who are already here want to join for one more run at it? Okay, while well, everybody's contemplating the joy of running St. Kathy Front one more time. Let's see who that was. Ooh! A Abram Pav. Abram Pav. Abram Pav? Vip Marba, if we want to go backward on that one. Uh, thank you for the follow. We, by the way, we appreciate everybody doing the follows. Just to let you guys know, we are putting together a charity drive. We haven't figured out what the charity is yet. We're working on that. Um, to honor Duffy Paragon Gaming 42, who is a member of our fleet and a good friend of ours. We have been given a ton of really awesome prizes, like a whole bunch of Eagle Moss ships and Strike Wing Attack Force, Star Trek Attack Wing from Whiz Kids, and we've got convention codes, and we've got penny pins, and we've got all kinds of really cool stuff that we will be auctioning off. But before we do any of that, we have to figure out what our charity is going to be. So hopefully within the week, we will have our website up and we will take 80 nominations for a charity. Everybody who nominates somebody for the charity is going to receive a convention code, which is Lita, Garrick, and, no, sorry, Lita, Kira, and Bashir. Am I right? Oh, uh, I don't know. Matt. You know what? I think I could, uh, where does okay, that, that bundle pop up in the Z store anyways? It should pop up in promotions. And I don't think I took it because I've got them all. I could just walk over to the kitchen and grab them. I got it. I got it. I got okay. it. I got it. So it's, um, these are one that, I, the ones that I have are Lita, Kira, and Bashir. Okay. Oh, right. Star Trek convention, hologram, Kira, Garrick, and Bashir bridge officers. And well, I guess the thing also gives you the, the one for Lita. It depends on which ones you got. This one didn't have Garrick. Garrick, I think, was last convention. This one is Lita, because they usually try and pick people who are at the conventions. Well, well, the, the, because Lita's are, like separately available, I think. She is. Yeah, a lot uh, of times if you donate to her I, charity drive, she has I, a separate Lita code that she can right, give you. Right. Well, what I was thinking, though, is that whatever the unlock thing you get for this uh, particular event was, it gave you two different uh, Lee claimed un unlocks. Mm -hmm. So you you have the Star Trek convention one for Kira, Derek, and Bashir, and if he didn't have it already, yeah. it would also give you the the one for Hollow Lita. Right, right. So there's a lot. Um, when we open up the website, you guys can put in your nominations, and there's going to be two things that you have to do for it, though. One, you have to tell us who you think it is and I'd love a sentence, but you also have to give us your in-game handle so that we can send you the convention codes. Otherwise, we won't know who gets them. Then, once we figure out who's going to get it, we're going to auction off all this stuff through a third party or through the charity itself because I am not going to get involved in handling money because that would just be like, we've got all this cool stuff and I'm making money off of it. Not a chance. But you'll notice on some of these, I don't know if you can see this up close here, right down here, Thomas signed a bunch of these ships. Yes, we have autographed. Thomas has signed the ships that we are going to be auctioning off. And he's, when I asked him to do it, he's like, nobody's going to want my signature. I'm like, dude, dude, everybody's going to want your signature. Oh. Okay, this is strange. Hmm. Uh, I, I took the box that has Bashir, Garrick, and Kira in it. And mm -hmm. uh, the game refuses to allow me to open it and tells me that I already have one. You may, yeah. Uh, some people have already got it. I, oh, well, here's the thing, though. It's the only hollow bridge office I currently have. Uh, uh, commission on this character is Lita. 
Interesting. As the old version of Lita. Yeah. Um, I had somebody else come back to me with that. I think it was Haight who came back and he had the same issue and he sent it off to uh, them and they said it's because you've already opened it. But other people have not had that issue where they've already got Alita or another character. So well, I'm not quite that, sure the where the conflict is. That, uh, the box doesn't have a copy of Halloween in it. It doesn't claim it does anyways. And it's telling me I'm not allowed to open it because I already have the bridge officers in the box equipped. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, the, the actual error message is, you have reached the limit of officers that you can have of this type. Oh... Yeah, I actually have had that happen on mine. Hi, Bethany. How are you tonight? I am doing good. Thank you for asking. I hope you're doing good, and too. And, yeah, I have five empty uh, bridge officer slots. Yeah, but it's it's the hollow ones. Um, it's one reason I don't equip all of my hollow characters, because I have so many of them. So when I get in, this is the joy of doing all the conventions, is you get down into the... Do I have them down here now? Ah, Let's see. Yeah, yeah, I've got all my Star Trek convention guys, and they code them differently. So I've got my Star Trek convention hollow lead, a bridge officer, and then I've got a couple others. So, But this is the yeah. one from her, and now I can't open her up again. Yeah, but the, the, the part that, that feels buggy to me is the fact that I don't actually have Bashir, Garrick, or Kira on this character, only Lita. That's really weird. You, you didn't get it from the pre because there was that on a previous convention though for Garrick, Kira, and Bashir. Well, I don't have them a as uh, candidates either. Apparently, that's weird. Interesting. So we'll have to get that one resolved. Maybe we can get some special bribes. Well, it's definitely something to um, discuss. I suppose we will find something to give to people who can't open that who nominate uh, good charities. We, we will find an alternate prize for you guys. I don't know what it is yet, but we will find something. This, this Mr. Master Corps says St. Jude's. I know, I saw that. So that, when we get a little bit closer to it, which hopefully will be this weekend, I'll, I have the website. It's called Two Absent Friends, you know, from Star Trek, even though it's not Wednesday yet. Since, as I'm sure you, well, Frost probably knows this, Every night when the officers would get together on the ships in the British Navy, they would drink a toast. And the Wednesday night toast was to absent friends. It wasn't just one. It, it depends on which sea you were in. And the, yeah. Also the time period, but, yes. but very specific, yeah, you didn't do them on the different dates. Anyway, so the goal here is we're going to raise some money in honor of Duffy. And then every year moving forward, we are going to do something similar. One of the prizes I really want to do is, you know, the ugly Christmas sweaters <laughs> that they have for the convention or for uh, Q's Winter Wonderland. I knit them. Ooh. I have a uh, gummy, uh, what's the gummy thing in the giant, the gummy monster in the middle. You know what I'm talking about in the ice pond? And you have to feed the fish and then the giant oh, thing. The, the oh, gummy. the Cuscari. Yes, yeah, the Cuscari. Yeah, that one's about three quarters of the way done. It's about up to here. I've got the sleeves made and that's done. I've done two others, one of which I gave to the lady who does the Everybody Wants an Epo voice. And, uh, Maria Bristow. Yes, and one I gave to one of our fleet mates. So we've done a couple of them so far. But it's my goal... If somebody wants one, I will auction that off. A handmade sweater in your choice of ugly Star Trek Online Christmas sweaters. And if I get it done, I will have a quilt to give away next year or to raffle away next year. Mm -hmm. and so, so, so what uh, pattern was the one you gave to Maria? Um, it was the first year that they did them. And I don't think I've got them open at the moment. Um, it I'd have to go back and look. That's on your Lorcas console. That that takes a long time to get. Usually it's the last one of that set you get. So that's awesome that you got it. It is nice, yes. All right, anybody else want to join us for our Zenkathy front? Okay, in that case, I'm going to make it a pug.
A pug. Yeah, I know. That's always scary. Even as dogs. Yes. Mmm. Mmm. That's ominous. Do you guys want me to go normal or crispy? Um, I don't care. Yeah, advanced is probably fine. Okay. So we'll go extra crispy, but not Nashville hot. Ooh, that scary. We will. Hot is hot. That 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 like insta popped. Yeah. <laughs> Some poor idiot's going to join us, not knowing what they're getting into. So back at Christmas, we were playing with Q's Winter Wonderland, and we all got transformed into animals and did Operation Wolf as adorable little animals. And I just feel so weird about the fifth guy who came in as a pug, probably gets in there, he's got his equipment and he's already, and we're down there with little Salak cubs it's, and it's, spiders. It's, it's like, how did, you, how did you get turned into a Tartalarian spider? Of course, you were cute. <laughs> And that was actually good. I wish we could have stayed that way for like the full run of the mission. Yeah, that it would be kind of uh, amusing to. Uh, it was adorable. We to, were to, to adorable. actually have a, a device you could use to, to 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 do that and stay that way. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Who we've got here. We've got us. We have Don Shizzle, and we have Rhea at Ambrius twenty one oh seven. And, and of course, Rodak, because Rodak lives here now, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I've got a wonderful Rodak story from Ed. Yeah, I am flying the Alachi thing. I've just got my regular one going. I shall do my aggro thingy. The, the, the ship amuses me because the Jim Hidar wingmen are actually bigger than me. <laughs> What I want. There we go. I hate that I accelerate into that one. Tell me want to get what that. Chip? Who got it? Oh, oops! I I I, I was mashing at the F key to, to pick up loot. Oh, Did wow. you get it? Yeah, I have the bomb. Do you need help? Uh, this is a bit of a squishy shit. Okay, let me go find you. Where are you going? Uh, north. North, okay. Okay, I will go oh, de-squish okay. so, things so, so, for so you. Someone has aggro. Cool. Uh, yeah, I got aggro. <laughs> I'm going to have a tank have Ooh. aggro. That went really good. How are you well, doing, Frost? You, the the Brodensick Cruiser, you can have a, a Tricobalt for breakfast. Mmm, tasty, tasty. And I got another SNR spike. No! What the heck? Oh, crap. And I SNR'd so that I ended up... Uh, eating my own tricobalt. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't kill me, but okay. still, it's, it's it's amusing to have the the SNR spike be like, oh yeah, by the way, uh, now you get to see your uh, tricobalt mines explode up close and personal. Frost, did you get that bomb by any chance? I did not. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Probably should have seen it, it, it coming because I, I was apparently having lag cancel ability activations. Uh. I got a bomb. See if I can do this one better than I did the last one. And then, then, then all of a sudden, uh, uh, the uh, game fast forwarded to the uh, current state, and I'm <laughs> halfway across the map from where I, I was. It's always fun when that happens. Kind of underneath so, so, where you so are. So, me seeing the tricobalt explode, that actually wasn't the, the uh, uh, distance I was at when uh, the tricobalt exploded, apparently. Let's see if I can be very subtle and do this one. Boom. 
There we go. And what does that give us? That's and, two and, out of five. And, and, and another rose badge ba uh, battleship gets to eat Trico Hall. As long as it's not you. Oh, good. Three down. I got. I think I have a bomb. I have a bomb. I have All a bomb. right, where are you? Um, I got gotcha. you. I see you. Where are you gonna go? I don't know. Wherever, I, wherever you want me to go. No, you just decide. I'm gonna go ahead of you and get it I'm set going up. To this to Starbase Zero, I think. The south one or the north one of the two that are remaining? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I really have no idea. Well, pick one. Well, I'm right next to it. Okay. And for some reason, I can't launch it. I'm right on top of it. Uh, one thing I no, no, you you, you can't launch over there. You have to come over here where we are. Is a, a visual bug where after the uh, bases get destroyed, you still see them there? And yeah, see it's annoying. Yeah, Frost, you're over at the star uh, base. You need to come to the Zenkathy star bases, which are... Uh, look, look, look on the mini-map for white circles. Mm -hmm. It's uh, to show you which bases haven't been destroyed yet. Yeah. Uh, I'm in trouble. Okay. I genuinely... I, I think with the location... Oh, the location I'm at has a white circle on the mini-map. Okay, Frost is right underneath at me. I don't even know if I have the bomb anymore. Oh. You should, unless you got blown up. Well, I, I didn't get blown up, but... Um, okay. Yeah, I don't have the bomb anymore somehow. Okay. Well, in the meantime, if somebody wants to pick one up, I'm taking out everything over here. Are you Eva? No, no, no. I'm Kethfa. No, no, I was talking about the Frost. He's Rawl. Okay. Riva is uh, oh. one of the poor, poor souls who got stuck with us. But yeah, I'm on the... Oh, I just exploded. No, don't explode. That's a bad thing. I think I accidentally flew into my own trick cobalt. Okay, it time. looks... Who picked that one up? Okay, two people have got it, so I'll give Riva some cover here. Oh, great. There's uh, a whole bunch of uh, uh, ships on top of the starbase. How about no? Get away from the starbase or I will try cobalt you. On top of the starbase. I know. It, it seems like a bad plan. Oh, well. Well, this is well done. This is the one I cleaned out a little while ago. Okay, let's head off and get that oh, last I, one. I think, I think that time I actually killed the uh, uh, Synkathy. I have the bomb. Cobalt. So where am I going now? I have the, the last one. There it is. Abram, uh, it is the ever popular keybinds. So my space bar activates everything off of my key binds, uh, or off of uh, lines 9 and 10. My 0 triggers everything off line 6. 1 triggers everything off line 7. And 4 triggers everything off line 6. Which I could have written something more complex, but Ed wrote this one. It's nice, it's friendly. We share them. To, to do keybinds for screenshot with UI because I came to realize that using the chat command or command for it one is slow, but also in certain circumstances the chat command cannot be used uh, for what uh, the uh, menu or whatever you want to screenshot. Yeah. Launching bomb now. Okay. Good, 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 good. I am blowing up this creature that's attacking the starbase. But we're happy to share the keybinds if you want them. Yeah, it's a script. And there's a lot of them that are already out there. And then you just have to figure out what you like. So this it, one... It, it, it's not tech... It's actually using an in-game scripting thing, too. It's yeah. not an out-of-game scripting thing. Yeah, it's totally in-game. And there's plenty of tutorials showing you how to do it in-game. Yay! Wait, well, what was the red thing pop up on the screen? I don't know. 
Hang on. I, 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 I was looking at the uh, mission status thing, and um, oh. it ha ha had like a red uh, a text or an optional object, but I didn't. We got it everything. It before I was able to read it. Um, because a lot of people don't use them. A lot of people do not. They just go through and manually trigger everything. I mean, you've got the options to trigger a hundred different sequences out of there. There, uh, there are actually certain builds where you, uh, where you either need to have a s multiple sets of manual triggers, or you have to manually trigger some of the skills because, yeah. like, like for example, if you're doing a turret spam build on ground, you just can't do a key bind to place all of your turrets. It yeah. just refuses to work. To try. And then there's a few things like when I'm going to do aggro, I do not want to accidentally tr not trigger this or turn it back off. So threatening stance and uh, attract fire. I'd manually yeah, trigger yeah, those if, two. If it's a toggle mm -hmm. and you, you have it stuck in a key bind, every time you push that key, it will get a switch. Right. And then things like grav wells, um, there's times you may or may not want to do them. So I'd like to do the ones that I like to put in specific locations. So Gravwell, um, Nimbus Pirates, Bacon of Kalos, uh, the, the things like that where you don't want them to just drop all the time. I usually keep those in my one through nine. That's the only thing I tend to trigger uh, trigger manually the whole night. Yeah, you can click on them as much as you want to. And there's some, uh, usually you want to set them up in the order in which you want them to go. So there might be something that you want to have trigger more often and you can actually put it in multiple locations. So that happens in a couple of mine. You'll see them in one or two different spots because I want them to trigger often. Oh man, this Alachi bridge mm -hmm. is one of my personal favorites. And I just realized something that I'd never noticed before. Which is? There's a special animation for sitting in the captain's seat. <gasps> no! No! Here. Uh, you want to share? I'll show you. Okay. Oh. Okay. For those of you in Discord, if Mar Hawkman shares... We'll all have some fun here. Well, I mean, if it, 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 anyone else who wants bridge invites, you know. Oh, doing not bridge invites. That's even cooler. Thank you. I can I can accept a bridge mm -hmm. invite. Uh, what's your character name? Rall. R A L L. Hey. Rall at Greater Frost. Oh, yeah. Abram Pav, if you ever want help with any of that stuff, feel free to ask us. And no, you don't have to join the fleet or do anything weird like that. Just ask. We're what happy to help. Is this? Uh, this is the Alachi event ship. This is an Alachi bridge. You get to recline in your. Sh Holy yeah. moly! You get to take a nap. Do that well, again. Also, the, 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 well, well, you can sit sit in the chair. Really fine too. Well, 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 look at the holographic display screen, though. <laughs> oh, I like this. I like this. You can play Picard and control your ship right there. I like this. Uh, also, when, when, when you look up, the, the, the force field dome is actually a star field map. <gasps> Ooh, I like this. Yeah, this is one of the best bridges they ever did. I like this very much. Holy cow, this is an awesome bridge. But it, it's yeah, one of those things so where, where they uh, justified the work of making this because this is actually just a part of the uh, kit they used in the uh, Romulan Republic story arc for uh, the uh, Elachi ship interiors that they do in story missions. Now, the Breen Bridge, I don't think they've ever actually used that one. In Not the really, story no. Mission. And I, of course, I can't sit straight on this damn thing. Yeah, some of the character proportions just don't work quite right for the animations. <laughs> the the worst one I mean, for that one is sitting in a Selene chair. <laughs> uh, so we have our two fraggles that we're playing in the mornings, uh, come caught and crumpet. And none of the animations work. We fall through the chairs because, you know, we're short. 
Is... Or, or, or you're, you're like in the middle of the chair and and your your legs clip into the uh, uh, a part where it bends because you're too short. Yeah. Well, so we're at the table with Janeway and the others in the Delta Quadrant and or whomever Tuvok and so the table is right up here and you can kind of just see our eyes like we're four-year-olds at the at the adults oh, table yeah. it's wonderful and then you realize it's because we've fallen through the chairs well uh you, you know how i play a gourd named slarg yeah slarg is like nine feet tall so some <laughs> of the uh, cut scenes his head just isn't in view i know i've got that on one of mine yeah you just see him from the shoulders down Ah, that's such a good part. Hey, it's late for me. It is like an hour later than I'd planned on doing this because I actually wanted to do something. Um, so I'm going to log off of here. Let's go raid somebody. That said, don't forget tomorrow night at 2 a.m. or tomorrow morning at 2 a.m., like in 30 hours, we are going to do our uh, Strange New Worlds not watch party because we can't watch it because it'll go out over things. So everybody tunes into Strange New Worlds and we'll put on our headsets and chit chat about it. Well, oh, yeah, if, well, if you happen to watch the episode while we happen to be talking, I mean, that's... Yes, because there will be times like, oh, can you believe that? And yes, we do spoilers. So if you're not watching it and you don't want spoilers, well, don't join us. But everybody else oh, is welcome. Oh, oh, Bacon oh, yeah. Overlord is with us. Bacon oh, Overlord. Oh, 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 one thing I, I want to say, say about this ship I'm currently flying is, this is not a lockbox ship. This was actually an event ship. Which one is this? Is this the bug ship? This is the Alachi Kulash. I love that ship! I've never yeah, been yeah, on the well, bridge. Yeah. I've never yeah, been on well, the bridge of uh, my ship. This is the bridge. Wow. Yeah, I have it's, that it's, it's on my Orion at the moment. That it uses for the Sheshar. Uh huh. To all of the Alachi ships use this bridge. Wow. Yeah, I've never actually come on the bridge of my ship before. I will have to go do that. All right, let's find somebody to raid, folks. Who shall we go raid? Who's out there tonight? Did, did, did. Song. Oh yeah, let's go raid Endeavor. That sounds great. Let me grab my rating toys here since I don't have a pie to do my rating tonight. Endeavor, where are you? Okay, folks, if you have not shared your love with Endeavor Raid our game on, please do so. You know, let's support each other. Let's make Star Trek Online. It's already an awesome game. Let's just share the love a little bit more. Let people know that we do care for each other. And we should have our information about Duffy's ongoing charity in the very near future. So, two, one, and rating. Everyone have a great night, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. And all that stuff. Yeah, that, I, I chuckled a bit there because of the fact that for a brief moment... Uh, that the second time I sat down in the chair, I was in the chair sideways. <laughs>